Yo, First Smoke family, episode 113 today, and it's nothing personal. We got my man Blazzy's on. <laughs> Blazzy's is an insane creative. He's an entrepreneur, designer, and a creator of many, many things. He's had so many dope collaborations with people from in the cannabis industry. You know, Bend Over Becky. He brought us uh, the duffel bag from Don Murphos and rest in peace to A1. So many takeaways from this. Get out your notepad, yeah. get a pen and pad. I'm gonna rewatch this two, three times over just to realize and memorize the steps that it takes to create something fully custom from the packaging to the actual product itself. He goes into it uh, taking a year and a half to two years from an idea to come to a concept before the release happens. And it's just really inspirational. It's crazy to see um, his journey and how far he's came and how far he's gonna continue to go, man. Just shout out, shout out to Blasi. We appreciate you guys. We appreciate you guys watching. Obviously, go check out the website, fsotd.com. We got three tiers to choose from. Shout out to the tier three gang. Also, Dr. Dabber, go get our code. Hit the sponsors tab. You'll see the most recent Dr. Dabber code. Go tap in with them, man. Make sure you support Dr. Dabber. Go get an excess, an Evo, whatever's your flavor, whatever you like. And uh, what else, Biggs? The dogs are howling. GrowGeneration.com. GrowGeneration in store or online. If you want to get hooked up, all you have to do is go to FSOTD.com slash sponsors. It's literally on the main page. And you have discount codes to Dr. Dabber, Grow Generation, Drip Hydro. Growers, if you want to try a new nutrient company, Drip Hydro. That's the company to try. And we also hook you up with a discount. All you got to do is hit our site. This one's for the creatives. This one is how to take an idea and turn it into an actual product. How to take a design, how to take inspiration, and how to bet on yourself. Inspirational episode, every creative, every brand, cannabis, outside of cannabis, any creative, this one's for you, this is Blazzy. Make sure you smash the like, subscribe if you haven't, and drop us in the comments. What'd you take away from this episode? Yeah, for Without real. Without further ado, man, let's get into it, Blazzy. I was like a bedroom designer from like 18 to 23. I used to just want to do street art. I could show you my space full of just like years of just me putting posters up, we paste. We used to hit rooftops, all types of shit. There was times where push came to shove where it's like, fuck. You know, I'd have to sell, you know, little bracelets or, you know, my gold chain or whatever. Put it on my site like 12 hours before I was actually supposed to drop it. I'm like, let me see who clicks it. I wake up at like noon the next day and it's like 20 bands in my account. And I was like, what the fuck? I think that, yeah, most of these products, man, they start here, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Why would people wanna buy weed out of the ass? You know, like that's not cool. But it's fun, you know, it's all about living in the moment. It's all about being cringe. I'm not trying to live outside my means. I'm trying to use 95% of this money into my business. My heart is really with these products and I wanna like, bring it back to being an artist at the end of the day because like I feel like that's what I want to prove before I die that like now nah, I'm really the one with this shit pressure makes diamonds bro that that's the type of shit that'll really have you step out of bed you know you got no choice Yo, what's good, everybody? We're back again with another one. It's first smoke of the day, episode 113 today. It's your boy Pack in the building here with my co-host Blackley. You already know what's Smoking up. Smoking big and it's nothing personal, man. We got my man Blazzy's <laughs> yeah. here, you dig? Man, I'm here to do it, you know. Um, appreciate y'all having me right from the jump. You know, I, as I was telling you right before we got on camera, like, you know, we do the podcast every week. And uh, so I'm always kind of a little unsure of like, do I need to do an extra podcast? But like, you know, me being a supporter, I, I fuck with what you guys got going on. I, I watched the show but two it's also like it gives me an opportunity to talk about something more specific you feel me that's like a been a big role in my come up you know so i appreciate y'all having me on here you feel me and like we've been i think we've been trying to plan this unofficially for like some time maybe like three five months or so so yeah, for I'm sure we finally got around to doing this Hell yeah, man. Appreciate you making the time and fucking we've been making fans. it happen. We've been fans of what you do, bro. Like man. for people that don't, that haven't been introduced to you from the weed game and stuff. I mean, to be able to watch your YouTube channel and see you R&D some of these products and from concept out of an idea yeah. all the way to the packaging, to the way it opens, to the every single aspect about the products you produce for cannabis brands and outside of cannabis. Yes. 
Bro, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's, it's Thank you so much. A dream. Bro. You know, um, I've always wanted to, uh, you know, just share a story and just make people, uh, you know, I, I was really into the the weed game from like consumer perspective just because of the bells and whistles that comes with it. You know what I mean? Like w the, the, the bags have holographics on it. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there's raised texture, you know, <clears throat> and I think things started really get fun when uh, uh, when uh, die cuts started coming around like towards the end of 2020, early 2021. And, um, you know, around that time, I was also starting uh, my first rounds of developing products, you know, so uh, uh, I think I kind of piggybacked off of both vibes back to back. You know what I mean? It's, it's definitely something you could just ping pong with as far as like inspiration. Um, but I think that, yeah, most of these products, man, they start here. I got to lie. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> People always ask me, like, you know, like, wh where do you start with your products? You know, I, like. Me and my boys, like, we're not scientists with, like, fucking test tubes and coats. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're just cracking jokes. We're laughing at shit. And as we go, we're like, oh, that'd be hard as a fucking ashtray. Or, ooh, what well, well, that was a plush, though. You know, so I think that uh, uh, I try to just keep that. Uh, I, I try to, like, put that energy in a bottle, in a product, and just share with my customers. So, like, that, that same uh, excitement I get when creating these, I just want to make sure the customers get it. So... That's why I make it a point to have the details. That motherfucker be watching, you know what I mean? So I just want to look at something. Yeah, man. You but. hit a big, man, and not to say before that you weren't, but that ashtray with the girl with her tongue out. Yes. Ash on me, Ashley. Everywhere. Yes. Like a random. That was the first ashtray, dude. And, uh, you know, to keep it real with you, uh, j just to be uh, straightforward, we only sold 200. We only made 250 when I first made them, right? And at that point, uh, my boy, uh, Nick, shout, shout out to Nick from Rents. You know, we were going back and uh, he was telling, he was trying to suggest like the number of uh, ashtrays I should be getting. And, he was telling me 500. I'm over here like, ah, I think I only sell 100, bro. He's like, nah, you're tripping. I'm like, all right, let's do 250 then. And uh, yeah, 250 went in like, I think 10 minutes that, that first round. And then the second time we sold 500 of them, probably I think under like 10 minutes as well. And, uh, you know, now we got Becky, but um, that's, that's the trickiest part about this whole thing, right? It's like, you know, it's not like a t-shirt where like, you know, you're, you're kind of allowed to do pre-orders still to this day with t-shirts. You could you could send them out in a couple of weeks. No one gets hurt. These products take about like six to eight months to like fully develop and like get it to the customer. So, you know, it, it's always tricky uh, buying these ahead of time. You, you think you can only do certain amounts and then you get reminded within 10 minutes. Nope, you're wrong, you know. But um, yeah, the uh, the Ashley was definitely uh, one of the first products to set it off. I just always saw uh, ashtrays as just an opportunity to, uh, to kind of just... Uh, treat as a canvas i think that uh uh it's definitely a, a whole lane that no one's really still to this day captured i want competition man <laughs> be careful what you wish for um uh, but did you know it was a hit though when you first pre you were kind of like let's see yes, what happened yes you knew i mean i just the, the, the i won't drop anything unless i knew that th this is my whole like rule with the products right it's like I won't drop it unless I saw it and I didn't know what brand it was and I wanted it. You know what I mean? Like if I didn't know who who, who made this, I would have came in here and be like, yo, what the fuck? Let me get that. Like, like who made that? You know what I mean? And like most of these products, you know, this don't say nothing personal on it. You know what I mean? This barely says nothing personal on it. Yeah. You know? And uh, I just try to make these products just like stand on their own. Um, I'm like totally anti-hype. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't believe in like the whole like, logo sell i think that great product sell and uh that's all i want to represent at the end of the day you know even even going back to well starting off we didn't go back at all yet but uh you know with with the bags you know um we made when we made coochie runs kind of like scrambled all over <laughs> right now but when we make coochie runs you know that's there's no text on that it's just slapped on the ass you know it's just it's an idea you feel me in, in reality any brand could have dropped that you know it probably was still in viral but well, Runtz is always a good like. The Runtz is like Bingo they word. they follow the viral trends of like yes. not follow but they like lead with them right like they're mm -hmm. trailblazers of yeah trendsetters. People would be scared to drop that and be like, "That's the bag." Yes. But if you look on episode twenty six of Ray Obama, he had the bitches lined yeah. up yes. across the whole front when he came in and had that. I was like, "Holy shit, bro! This is crazy." But this is why Runtz is Runtz. And you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I think Runtz is where they're at and they've really like set the tone for their brand just based off of the, the the fact that they're down to take risks creatively they're down to be stupid sometimes you feel me and uh they always succeed with that and um you know i'm very thankful that they took risks on me just because uh you know 
I give y'all like the backstory yeah, on that. We so, love that, bro. Uh, shout out to my boy uh, Ku from All Made. You know this blank brand out here. Uh, he was assisting Run to the Time 2019 to make some blanks. They're like, yo, he needs some graphics. They got to me. We did a couple things. Conversation goes dead. Six months later, Nick's in LA and um, I had just got an office for the first time. You know, like from my background, I came up on streetwear, gra- on just designs and stuff for Lil Wayne, Lacoste, Grateful Dead. A lot of these brands, Pleasures, Chinatown Market. Um, but I've always wanted to get into the Wii game and I always knew runs for the big dogs. So, you know, I, I had this office going on. He came around and uh, I had nobody on my team, nothing like that. And uh, he really just saw the opportunity. Like, okay, this motherfucker could grow, you know, and uh, I always credit them for uh, uh, teaching me how to be a boss and like how to uh, treat people with respect, you know, because I come from like, yeah, like the streetwear, uh, you know, industry, but also from the music industry where, you know, I'm doing merch for rappers, for Juice World, Eminem, Dre, fucking Amy Winehouse. The list goes on. And uh, you get burnt out dealing with motherfuckers that aren't in the label. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you tried, to, I mean, y'all know, you guys have a hundred stories of dealing with rappers that are fucking dickheads, ass, jackasses. And, uh, you know, so I always, I always hated that shit about uh, uh, music and uh, street where I found my safe space is dope people, people gain money. And I didn't know what game money was until I started hanging out with the wee motherfuckers, you know? <laughs> and uh, with them, they're totally uh, like anti weird. You feel me? They're, they're the most solid motherfuckers because they're the ones that know that, like, okay, it takes, you, you, you got, you, it takes something to make some. You feel me? Whereas rappers, you, I mean, yo, fucking Blasi, I need a, I need a fucking verse. All right. Cool, five thousand dollars. I don't gotta spend no money. I just gotta buy a little bit of weed. Like, there's no, there's no, uh, there's not too much cost to be a rapper. You know, yeah, that's interesting. You say yeah. that. There's not much of a like these processes take you forever. Yeah, and you gotta put it on your. You gotta bet on yourself. For me to sell a forty dollars shirt, I gotta spend twenty two bucks sometimes. You know what I'm saying with the blanks and all that. You know. Whereas rappers, their product's almost free. You know what I'm saying? Where, yeah. you know, they, they, it comes to the territory. They got security. They got, they, they got pay everybody. But, um, you know, the rap, uh, you know, with, with the weed game, motherfuckers just know it takes some to make some. And, uh, you know, they've always been, uh, uh, they're, they're always willing to, uh, to spend money and invest with me. So early on, they, uh, uh, they told me like, yo, we need all these designs, Blasi, but like, you can't do all these. We, I, I literally have people knocking on my door. We need more designers in here. So from, I never considered having an extra designer. Like my bio at that time on Instagram was one man army. I thought I was the coolest motherfucker ever. I'm doing this all alone. You, you, no, that's not how you do it. You know? And I learned that very quickly. And, you know, as soon as, uh nick from run started telling me like bro you need a uh to build a team you know we got three designers in there none of them came from you know uh creative background none of them had brands most of them made graphics for the first time in my office you know they ended up making stuff for like bigger entities Damn. like nascar dirk within a year you know shout out to them nate e uh edgar um but you know they had joined the team and then from from that point forward you know Runs was really utilizing and like um relying on us to to work on like bag designs because for the first i'll say being like the first six nine months um at least it pretty much fucking felt like it you know we were the only ones who get those die cut bags made you know what i mean so like we were ahead of the game for like six months so like everybody who wanted a, a bag made or whatever you know the whole process part of the stamp was like okay cool you you you're, you're part of runs game part of jokes up but let's go, let's go Blazzy's office. Let's get you some t-shirt designs. Let, let's get you the logo made and let's come up with a weird ass bag. You know what I mean? So we were doing that like, Jesus, I, I probably had like meetings like that every other day for like nine, 10 months. You know, that shit was Damn. fun <laughs> until Bong Ro got, got a hold of the, you know, these die cut match manufacturers in China. They want to make more money than you do. So they finna look for uh, people who want, who want die cuts as well um but uh you know for, for a long time that's kind of what we were focused on just developing these brands and you know they, they really put me on training wheels as far as becoming a boss you know through that i was able to uh you know hire designers i was able to understand how to pay people and uh you know just just to run a business and uh, that definitely wouldn't have been possible if i were to have still been doing street i mean it makes sense it probably would have happened but I think at this pace, it would uh, for sure, you know. Two things. Did Runtz already have a logo when they came to you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this was like the birth of the, their their 
die cut bags. Yes. Yeah. They were yes. already we were making yeah. like sticker bags. So, shit, like so he, square bags. Yeah. And shit, right? Here's the timeline. The first die cut bag, you know, and this is something that like me and the homies have talked about was the Imran Runs collab. It was potato runs and it was a foot. Random as hell. It was December 2020. And um right after that we made the uh the the LB runs or the I don't know what we called it, but it was LB. I put them on a uh, put them on a quarter. I made them as like a, a quarter. I remember that. I remember and that, that was the first one I did for yep. like runs and like that shit went that, man, that LB that tagged every- me and everything was like, man, shout out to Blasi for making this shit. And I was like, what? Like they show love. Yep. Yeah. You know, that but dude shows mad love, man. bro. L, what? Come on, man! Like he's a fucking trailblazer. I remember I asked LB uh, to to hit his blunt, man. He just gave me some weed to roll up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was on that curve before. Yeah. How does the conversation with Coochie Runs come up? Like, hey, bro, we so, need something new, and so uh, um, you know, I get a call from Nick and Ray like on Facetime. Sounds like something. a Ray idea for sure. Yeah, you know, and uh, he's like, "Yo, YNJ is trying to fuck with us." I'm thinking we should do some shit. So then we get on a, on a let's say a four way FaceTime call, and uh, you know the uh, the the coochie man entity that shit starts going, starts bubbling. Everyone starts singing the song and shit. And then we're just all right. It has to be called coochie run. So then we're just thinking like, all right, what could we do? What could we do? And there and then it was just quick like all right, let's put a bitch on the bag, right? So I'm on Google, you know, like I'm a graphic designer on Photoshop mainly. I don't know how to illustrate or draw, you know, all my graphics, all this shit is just like Photoshop, just rasterizing and fucking with manipulating it till it looks good and uh i was on google for the whole day looking for the perfect ass and but once you find the perfect ass you gotta remember it's an image it's very rare you're gonna find the exact same perspective same angle of the front you know what i'm saying so my homie saw me stressing there for some time and he was like yo i'm finna call this shorty over and we finna just have this bitch pull up in a thong and we just gonna get these photos right here so uh uh, that it happened like that and um you know i i started realizing i be i might have to come to another industry man i started realizing i might be a plastic surgeon (laughs) i shaped that bit man that ass look perfect you know dr (laughs) blasey um for ten thousand dollars this is what it can look like yes honestly truthfully there's places people only dream of going I've been there. And you could too. And uh, so, so we, we pretty much created that. And then, you know, since we had the model there, we just flipped her over and just, okay, cool. And let's get the front shot. And that's how it came to, uh, came to be. And, um, I think that once we made it, uh, I realized, yeah, these are gonna go viral. I think this might've been like our 10th bag at that point. Like, you know, we had already been doing, doing them a couple of times. And uh, that was definitely my favorite one, just for the fact that this wasn't something that was like a PNG on Google. You know what I mean? This is something that like, you can't reproduce it, you know? Which like, I've always wanted in like my designer bucket list to have like a viral bag. You know what I'm saying? I'm a familiar with Bong Row on San Pedro and Six or San Pedro and Third, excuse me. It's just nothing but fake bags. And like, I've always wanted to get bootlegged and that was the one like, motherfuckers made a pound bag you saw a little small one that said white runs on the ass like it, it was really dope bro you know as a designer it's like i think early on motherfuckers are just like offended by getting copied it's like the worst thing ever you feel like your 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 whole like identity is being uh is, is being put at risk but uh i think as you go uh more into and you start becoming mature you start realizing it's it's honestly just a uh indicator that you're really going up and you're becoming an example to copy so that's always on my checklist cool if, if, you, if you make a viral product if you make a viral f- product they're gonna make viral products of your viral product you know what i'm saying oh, so interesting i don't know just, just seeing the coochie runs thing go up uh that that shit was inspiring and then all the memes that came out like that's the best part is just seeing like the shit that people make of it you know um at the end of the day i think that uh in the context of marketing and like just promoting your products you want something that people are going to want to throw on instagram on their story you want something that like 
you're gonna want to mention to your homie as soon as he hops in the whip with you hey look at this fucking bag or like bro look at this shit i found the bag you know so um that's always a, a that, that that's always uh on my mind when developing these bags or these products you know but you know we, we just like to have fun you know i don't take myself too serious you feel me and even after that bag man uh rami ma shout out to her she fucking made like a, a she made like a pussy pussy pack or some shit i don't you know they they promoted it on drink chaps you could check her episode but they had some weird ass bag where it was actual actual pussy so that was also my my way of seeing it got bootlegged but you know it, it it's it's all uh uh it's all good though at the end of the day and also runs man those motherfuckers talk to you about uh the benefit of being bootlegged you know what i'm saying like i asked nick very early on he's like you know um when people buy fake gucci two things one they're either ignorant and they think they got gucci or two there's they think it, they know it's fake but they're telling everybody it's real and they're telling everybody where to go to get the real you know what i mean like oh this is gucci yeah go, go to this store Damn. oh this is runs oh you don't got runs like oh yeah you gotta go over here they got runs you know they're, they're still promoting the brand and, and there's still time people to go get that shit so it works out and then they, they're gonna get corrected they be like nah you gotta go get the real shit over here you can get the real shit over there so um i learned that from them for sure that's a good way to look at it yeah a lot of brands it's a, a knee-jerk reaction is that's not real that's not mine that doesn't represent my brand it's like this forceful like no never yeah i mean you even hear about lawsuits nike does where they're i mean i was just watching yeah. this guy who does shoes and they he talks about like a two-year long nike lawsuit that he had to go through and how intimidating it was and then how pissed off he got to where he's like oh i'm gonna fight back fuck nike like crazy <sighs> shit and yeah. but but based on like uh, they thought he was bootlegging it's cool perspective to look at it is honoring the what you're inspired by yeah, yeah. For sure at the end of the day they're still rocking it still says like there's fake nothing personal shirts on like you know really yeah absolutely what <laughs> the say no the fentanyls the um the fucking the pro-choice one the perk 30 jersey is probably the most bootleg thing i got out there they, they made a gang of those on amazon um but like i just see it as indicators like cool it's like like you, you're doing something you know what i mean you're getting mm -hmm. copied that's always a good that always means you're doing everybody something. can't get it but everybody wants it exactly Damn. and that's that indicator of like you got a real movement and even just like your products and stuff you you keep in that scarcity involved mm -hmm. man that just it does so much for the longevity yeah. of what you're doing because it keeps people on their toes like what's next yeah what's gonna drop and then when you do drop they're ready to take action. They're not mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to grab one, you know, in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. They already know, like, look, if you don't get it on the drop, you're, you're not, not going to get, get it. it. Yeah. You know, you I haven't reached out of Amazon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you get the fake blasty. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly, man. The Bangladesh yeah. version. Exactly. Yeah. 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 What's so, your creative process like? Um, so a brand comes to you and they're like, hey, bro, I got this crazy idea. Are you smoking one? Are you putting music on? Are you joking with the homies? Like, what? what is that? Well, it's all like uh, clockwork to me at this point, to be honest with you. I think that, uh, um, like, I don't believe in creative blocks, to be honest with you. I think that, like, I figured out, like, how to, how to go about it. I, I just clean up my, 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 uh, my workspace, you feel me? And I just get to work and just, I've learned long enough that, uh, uh, you know, you just, you, if you just work on it, you just, you just force yourself. Okay. I got to do this. It's you finna cook up regardless, you know? Um, but my creative process is, you know, it just stands from being, you know, just like your guys creative process. You guys think of dope shit all day long too. It's like while you're in the car, Oh, this will be dope as that. I do the same shit. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I, I once we that get that concept in mind i have it on like a notes tab which i look at every single day and then we just i just look at these these like these phrases are just like oh this as an ashtray or this as a rolling tray or this as a hat and i just look at it and then once i could really start like developing a concept in my head then i get to paper we start plan setting up a game plan this is what it's going to look like we need a 3d file oh no we need a graphic on this we, we need the airbrush guy to do that and then from there it's like the 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 things already solved i think like um i've just done uh i think i've done just a good job of like trying to like understand myself and like try to understand my audience and like what they like and what makes a product like these are all um you know icebreakers they're all punch lines you know so it, it's also a mental checklist every time i draw a product like it has to be like a plus 
Like there's a lot of B plus C plus uh, samples at my office, which would sell great, but I want to build that repertoire. You know what I'm saying? Of just like a one products shit. That's just golden. And, uh, you know, you mentioned that, uh, you know, people, I want to keep people on their toes. Right. It's like, that's always been a conscious thing. I never want people to, uh, you know, one, like no one I'm a drop, you know, like I've tried to make it a thing where like, I think inconsistency is key. I think once you fall into the form, at least with products and like, and like putting out like, you know, merchandise, uh, I, I think it does come a little boring once it's like, okay, every Thursday of the month, you know, come here. Another where, shirt. Where it's like, Damn, you know, I don't yeah. know when Blazzy's going to drop, you know? So I, I try to be like, I at least try to drop once a month. You know what I'm saying? But like some months will be three products. Some months I might not even drop shit. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to do anything. And uh, it's all just a matter of just like, just creating that story. I think the way like Frank Ocean or Playboy Cardi could like hold on to like only doing a couple albums for so long is just for the fact that they trained their audience to ex accept it like that, you know? So um, I get inspired a lot by music, man. I'm not going to lie. Like I I'm jealous that they sell a free product. And uh, for anyone to like appreciate a Kanye West song, they could just play it in the next 30 seconds on Spotify, the whole thing go on YouTube can't do that with clothes you can't do that with products you know what i'm saying so like i'm always trying to find a way to uh to to get my uh i don't know i'm just like it, it's inspiring to see them uh, uh being able to i don't know what the fuck i'm saying Hi, shit no right dude that's <laughs> it, that makes sense because it's like you can create something out of nothing where yes. the investment could be an hour or two hours or it could be weeks to create produce a song what are you listening to right now well, like if my, we, if I'm listening to Rilo Rodriguez. I'm listening to a lot of real young OG. Listen to a lot of Grind Hardy, Money Science Sway, Rest in Peace. Um, I'm listening to a uh, Herencia de Patrones, some corridos, and uh, man, I don't know. I, I just, I, yeah, I, I try to. I always be like going through different phases with music. You feel me? Be, be hearing new shit. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that like going going back to like the inconsistency is key thing it's like uh you know i i just never want people to expect one of a drop next you know i think that's a good way to tie this conversation back to where it was um i think that uh uh you know i just want people to be on their toes i don't want people to know like okay he's only dropping rolling trade he's only dropping ashtrays you know what i mean i want this to be like fun you know so that's always on the top of my mind no nah, it's dope and like you take the entire process uh, very seriously with everything being custom. I mean, the packaging is an experience and then yes. you get to the final product and you're like, Oh shit. You know? Yeah. So with this everything one, is, uh, just so characterized yeah. with your personality, yeah. Your persona, yeah. you know, yeah, that, that's what sure. makes it fun is that, um, there is variety. It's not like every month you're going to get a t-shirt and a hat, <laughs> which is a lot of brands, you know, yeah. it's like t-shirt, hat, hoodie, you know, and then it's easy to be else, forgotten right? like that. You yeah. know what I mean? What, what, what's your advice to brands that are made or like, you know, young hustlers that you my know, advice got those ideas. But cause like you said, your process is like everyone else, but you take action on it. You yes. build a team, you stay, yes. cons you stay consistent with your work ethic. Maybe uh -huh. not your products. They have variety, but consistency in other areas yes. is necessary. You know, absolutely. Um, what I would, what I would tell, uh, somebody like, you know, my homie told me yet the other day, I think this is like a cool question. It's like, you know, if you were, yeah, same, pretty much the same thing. If you were to start a brand today, like what would you do to come up? And like, I would just focus on making the most like original shit, the most creative thing that I could possibly think of. You know, I would, if I were to start tomorrow, I'd drop bend over Becky. I'd drop this, this duffel bag ashtray. You know what I mean? Like I would still drop the same things, you know? So like, I think people mess up very early on by just, I mean, it's kind of tricky. Like I have, a, I, I'm saying all this, but you have brands like Half Evil, which my my homie owns. That like th they bank off just having a logo. Gallery department's killing it with just the logo. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? But uh, you know, everyone has their own perspective. But but you know, f f from my experience, what's made me successful is the opposite. It's kind of it, it, it's a little it, it fucks my head up sometimes. You know, I'm wondering if I'm doing it right. But uh, you know, I, I've always focused on just making the uh, the craziest products because that that's what helped me come up from you know day one i didn't you know people didn't recognize me until i started making these crazy products to begin with and i only had 
4,000, 3,000 followers. And to that point, I was just doing graphics all day long for motherfuckers on Twitter. Um, but my advice is, yeah, just, just focus on, you know, making while you're, you know, just those million dollar ideas. You'd be thinking in the car, you'd be thinking when you're smoking with your boy, you'd be thinking while you're cleaning, like write those down. And you got to remember these manufacturers in China, these overseas manufacturers, they want to make more money than you. You're, you're, you're small fry. You know what I'm saying? So Google that because they got ads like a motherfucker on there. Search up custom ashtray, custom 3D ashtray. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not rocket science. It'll take you literally 30 seconds, a minute. That's you know what, what I was going to say. Cause like even Go us, right? We, we fuck with, with, with people who they have a template. Look, you can get this one, this one, this one. Uh -huh. Then we're like, all right, let's get, let's figure the design out. So we'll figure the design out. But you take it the whole way and you're like, nah, I'm I'm gonna do something that's never been done. Yeah. <laughs> There's no double bag ashtray. Yeah, there ain't. There's no bend over Becky ashtray. Nah, you know what I'm saying? Nah. So that's to me, that's fully custom. It's kind of mm. like uh, clothes, cut and yeah. sew. That's cut and sew. This is cut and sew. That's a yeah. bar. Damn. That's facts. Um I, I don't think it was ever like a, a like, oh shit, that, like that kind of I just always like you know, I don't know. I, I, I be going to smoke shops and shit. And there's always like that weird one in the corner. You're like, oh, that should make me look at it an extra 10 seconds. You know, where does it get that made? Let me there's Google nothing it. else like it. Yeah. So it's you creating a lane of your own. Yeah. I would encourage people to uh, to Google your ideas as much as possible. Like, you know, it'll literally tell you, <laughs> you know, Google that it has. It's a, it'll say a million results found in point zero one seconds. They brag about it to you. <laughs> that like allow that to be your biggest reason to google some shit <laughs> you feel and, me? And, then, wow. and then what are you doing just shooting emails out calling them yeah. and shit you know saying so, this is what i want this well, is the idea yeah i'm on like my 40th product at this point just like developing for myself and for people so it's all like clockwork we know what files to have at this point but uh you know like i said like man i i wish i could i had like a powerpoint presentation just things i could show you but like you know my first uh product that i sold a thousand pieces of the uh, the bank bob we did a piggy bank of that one that was the first product and um i was just bored at home i'm like bro this was, I, I i went to the uh i went to rosarito mexico and i was passing by tj they got a gang of these like ceramic at uh fucking ceramic piggy banks i'm like Man, I would love one if there was that uh that old SpongeBob photo where he looks like a thug with money and shit <laughs> on t-shirts. I love that as a uh as a piggy bank. And uh, you know, I just Googled it. You know, custom piggy banks. And then I I, I was high as fuck. Like I said, I don't draw or anything like that. And I just I, I grabbed that image and I just traced it on uh on Photoshop and I sent it over to them. I'm like, I get this as a piggy bank, 12 inches, blah, blah, blah. And they did the 3D following for me. You know what I mean? So the, it, it made it even easier. Like I said, these motherfuckers want to make more money than you. So like they're going to go the extra they mile. They got that work. They have the English translators, you know, like talk to them like you're talking to your boy. Can you do this for me? Okay, for sure. Let me know everything you need from me. I'll get that for you, you know? And uh, it, it's just, uh, it, it kind of makes it boring, but be careful what you wish for. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just makes it boring that like I don't have like, it would make it more fun if there is more of a developed ecosystem. I, I'm only saying that just because I experienced it with like streetwear. You know what I'm saying? Like I still at the end of the day, my bread and butter is T-shirts. I, I do make killing out the uh, the clothes at the end of the day. And uh, it, it's, you know, me and my homies and our underground side of streetwear, it's like a developed ecosystem. You feel me? There's so many brands and we, we kind of just like it's synergy. You feel me? It's like a community energy. And uh, we just build off of that and just grows and grows. Um, so... I think the last couple of years, I've definitely seen a lot more people developing products from underground artists. And I think it's just, you know, I encourage everyone to make some shit, you know, I think everyone should have a perspective. It's like, you know, like they have all these tools to make music. Like you, you can make all y'all can make a song tonight. Why can't we all make products tonight? You feel me? We're right here, our favorite place to go, you know, where the pros go to grow, at Grow Generation. Over 60 stores nationwide, either in-store or online. Use our code. First Smoke 10. Family, get online if you're shopping for grow goods, First Smoke 10, or in-store anywhere in the U.S. Tell them the First Smoke family sent you. We'll see you there. Did you have OGs around you that were into the similar nah, stuff? So you just kind of found something that you got enlightenment from that you're like, man, I love <laughs> yeah. doing this. I came up, bro. I'm from uh, Southgate, California. That's like Southeast L.A., uh, first generation. Uh, my parents grew up over there in Mexico. 
uh they don't know too much about american culture you know what i'm saying uh i just learned it just being in high school being in school just just growing up you know what i'm saying and uh i, I didn't know i didn't have no hustling bones in my body you know what i mean until i started doing graphics like when i was 21 i'm 28 now um and you just you just learn how to uh if there's any og if i would say there's an og i'll say nick man i fuck with nick <laughs> you know he, he taught he taught me everything he taught me the ropes you know how to be a boss and shit um i was a very cool designer creative but like he taught me how like now i got 10 people on my team and i didn't know how to pay nobody until he came around um but prior to that no nah, I, I learned all this shit by myself photoshop i didn't have a cool cousin that made t-shirts like <laughs> none of that shit <laughs> yeah. you know like nah nah like it, it sucks everyone i grew up with you know we all want we all chase the same dream you feel me but it's like now nah, i got represented for them um but yeah we all wanted to do creative shit but we didn't have anybody to look at so even coming up i always made a thing just to represent where i'm from because i know there's a gang of kids which i get dms now and it's dope to see you know from that same area where it's like cool i planted the seed now if people want to like do something that i do now they have a blueprint whereas like when i was 16 17 man i was looking at like Closest thing I could think about was Shepard Ferry. This motherfucker is, <laughs> you know, was so different for me, you know, but I thought he was just cool because he just did street art. But, you know, if I could just be somebody's Shepard Ferry from their town, it's like, I'll do that, you know? Man, I'm just, e even just taking notes myself or like, don't be afraid to go fully custom. Don't be afraid to go through the processes. Don't be afraid to fully enact those ideas in your yeah. head because that's what you're, you're literally you built your brand off of is that you have an idea and you're like, nah, it has to be exactly like this. Whereas some of us, we get caught up in speed or time or we just need to drop it. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? And we compromise those things um, uh, to um, just, you know, oh, I, I we don't got the designer, so let's just settle up on the design, or we don't got this, so let's just settle up on this. And it's like, I feel like you having that a part of your identity of not being willing to do that, like having all these samples and not even dropping them, having that type of discipline yeah. is so key to success and having a brand these days. Oh, yeah. Because if not, you're just going to be in the saturated, flooded waters of yes. everybody that just does shit to do it. Yes. Hoping to make money. Yes. Because trust me, dude, if, if you want to make money, I mean, what they say, like real estate's the best thing to do, <laughs> you know, maybe Bitcoin or some shit. Um, you know, these products, like I'm, I'm going down with my ship, you know what I'm saying? For better or for worse. Like this is, I'll, I'll die doing this. This is fun. Like I have fun waking up and doing this and, um, you know, you can't be doing this for money. I mean, it, it's very lucrative and it does make a lot of money, but like, there's probably better things fucking make women's wear and shit. Probably bikinis are, are better, uh, hustle than this shit, you know? Um, but patience, I learned that shit from two people, man. One, I used to work at, uh, uh, the airport LAX for two years. I used to pick up boxes from the surrounding warehouses from the airlines, like fucking Lufthansa or Air Korea, pick up these boxes, send them out to, uh, laboratories. This is like just regular, like blue collar warehouse job. But, um, I'm, I'm only mentioning that because, you know, uh flights are based off weather and like weather you can you can never predict it you know you could predict it, you could assume it but it's never going to be I, exact so just dealing with like flights being longer people stress out about being at lax for a couple hours i spent two years there <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> like so i learned patience deal, dealing with that just just being told that like okay you're gonna get out at 11 p.m you get there at 11 30 nope you gotta stay till 2 a.m there's a delayed package what are you gonna do we'll replace you tomorrow you know, and uh, just doing that and uh, Colorful Mula, who does a uh, glow game, you know, like I was only doing, you know, a couple of years ago, I was only doing, I probably dropped like in 2021, maybe like eight, nine products, you know, and 2022 last year, I met, uh, I met Cass, Colorful Mula from uh, glow game. And uh, I, I really fuck with it, what they do. Like, I feel like they got a brand like no other. Um, so many rappers be trying to make brands. They put their face all over. It looks stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They have an identity where it's like glow gang, like the fucking, and they have a universe, you know what I mean? With their characters. So I always thought that shit was hella cool. And they release products like a motherfucker every other week. And I asked them when came to my office, like, bro, what? like, you know, as much as I do, these products take like nine, 10 months to make, like, how are you doing? And he was like, you just got to have like that many products just to juggle around you know you got to have like 50 products so you got something to look forward to every single week you know so i learned that from him so it's like 
you know, like this man, like rest in peace, my boy. When he actually came up with this, if I'm not mistaken, you know what I mean? He was like, yo, Blasi, we should do like a, a duffel bag ashtray. Damn. You know wow. what I mean? That's Long cool. time. Yeah. Yeah, man. Rest Don Marifos. Shout out yeah, to Don Marifos, man. The whole gang. They're, they're definitely planning on coming on the show. They yeah, man. Shout out to Murph. Hell yeah, man. Rest in peace, A1. <laughs> yeah, Master man. Murph. Shout out to Gary. <laughs> yeah. all, all them boys over there, man. They, they, they've, uh, uh, and, and I mentioned this too. I'll, I'll, I'll go on a tangent because it's worth it with this one. You know, uh, shout out to Don Murphos. You know, I, I mentioned Rick, Nick a lot, you know, him helping me. Um, but one of the first, I think the first clients before they probably bought runs before they probably bought LB and Ray around, he brought, uh, Don Murphos, you know what I mean? And, uh, the minute, like literally the first graphic that this kid in my office, Nate, uh, one of my designers, the first graphic he made on Photoshop, they bought and they were like, this is hard. And then he was on the team. And Damn. I think that like, no one's trusted us more than them. Even you, you know, I work with like, Face client, UMG, crazy client list. No other client has done as well like Dom Murphy's because like they trust us. They understood our aesthetic. The second, literally the first graphic, <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, they they just got it. And uh, they, they've always like um, embraced us and like represented us, posted us, all that. And, uh, you know, they're, they're great clients. They pay. You know what I'm saying? Back to that weed shit. Motherfuckers love paying. They know it takes them to make some. So uh you know i, I just want to shout them out you know that they just believed in this from the jump and like it's dope to see them go grow the fuck like this you know like you know they were the first motherfuckers that i saw they were like oh these are bosses man that's just dope i remember just like seeing a1 and like merv just coming to the office with like one chain and two chain then they got a1 and this shit got a cherry on it <laughs> you know then the merv got the eagle one it's like the owl one it's just that shit's inspiring to me you know they got flavors too they're yeah, everywhere man. they're it's my favorite weed you know and and like uh you know j just mingling with a lot of uh, uh brands like weed brands and just being in the industry for a couple of years you know there's been a lot of like uh opportunities to collab on stuff and like i don't really want to work with anybody until i want to work with fucking dom Murphy's, you know what i mean so i'm glad we finally got this done and yeah this was a, a concept that uh you know a1 rest in peace he uh you know he, he pitched to us um right before he passed and uh you know it, it's dope to see it kind of like come to uh to its creation we're gonna be dropping some uh some flower with it as well so i'm pretty excited oh, yeah that's that, dope. That first place i announced it so yeah uh, yeah, yeah have these already dropped right nah. oh these haven't even nah. dropped yet on release oh, yeah bro this Damn. is gonna drop uh next month i'm gonna eat both of those <laughs> hey, easy buddy easy. yeah man so Dude, this is i wanted to show y'all too like you know some of the uh different parts you of know like, what it comes back to while while we're talking to blazy investing in yourself investing in in his idea he's like yeah it might take six months but guess what i'm gonna figure it out my family That's investing in yourself my family uh you know like i said they're all uh you know blue collar just like entry-level jobs you know with all due respect um they uh, uh their way of like hanging out is they like to go to the casino and gamble you know what i mean i asked my aunt what you want for christmas she said a hundred dollars worth of lottery tickets like what <laughs> she made 30 bucks i was so frustrated and that kind of like kind of rubbed off on me and I, I kind of like started getting into blackjack, you know what I mean? And it only takes a couple of nights to be like, ah, bro, I could invest in that in a product. You feel me? And then, so like that, that's where I get hot. And especially like we talking about careers and what, what makes more money than what it's like, bro, like don't blackjack or design. I'm going to choose design. I mean, that's a practical answer, but like, I don't know when you're, when you're just at the casino and you're just, you're just spending money trying to make some money i just i get frustrated with myself I'm like ah, i could have i could have funded a whole Takes fucking the fun out of it quick right yeah i could have i could have made a whole production line and i would have made guaranteed six times you know what i mean it's just like jesus like you know but uh i, I always i always invest in myself every t i'm i'm numb to the fucking i'm numb to money thank god it's like on debit cards and you don't see it in cash too much at least now that I don't deal with weed people, I don't see any cash too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's all just a digit. And uh, I, I say that because, uh, you know, I don't, I, I try not to to focus on it. You know, I just handle my necessities. I'll, you know, I'll get my food. I'm going to get Postmates. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to smoke up. I'm going I'm to I'm go shop a little, but like, I'm not trying to live outside my means. I'm trying to use 
95 percent of this money into my business like thank god this shit's working for me so why the fuck wouldn't i spend more money on it keep pumping the machine because like i wake up every morning like you know i thank god like i'm 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 very thankful for for my position and like where i'm at right now in life but like i know i deserve to be like 10 times bigger you know what i'm saying and like i don't want to stop till i get there you feel me i wake up every morning frustrated like fuck i need to get bigger i need i need i need to go crazier you know but uh yeah i always like you keep tripling down on yourself there's no way you won't yeah I, I see someone like kanye west man like early on like when he was doing his shoes he was frustrated he was like bro i can't do this you need money to do this you need money to the to do that and once he started getting the money he just developed his own yeezy shit you know what i mean he ended up st- he ended up removing himself from the whole adidas shit and doing his own thing you know so my favorite sneakers they had to bring them back right? in yeah because it's like fuck just sell sell everything yeah off. With, with just a How, whole sway How? yeah <laughs> that's it yeah. yeah it's like it's true know, though yeah you need a lot of money to like start these these products up but it's like you know if if you know if if you got your your, your finances okay and you could you have maybe five ten thousand you're you're trying you know all I'm saying is you got to have like at least 5,000 just for like a rainy day. Put that money on a product. Just try it. At least be what I learned in high school, man. They, they asked my, my, my school counselor asked me like, what do you want to do? I'm like, do you want to go to school after this? I'm like, nah, she's like, why wouldn't you like knowledge is everything. I'm like, what? She's like, the, the, the more, you know, is like the more you're able to put yourself in conversations, the more you're able to talk about things. Like you want to be able to experience a lot of things, just be able to speak on it. And, uh, you know, I, th- I I live by that. You know what I'm saying? Like be like if, if so if someone's talking in the room about like, yeah, man, products are all that and you fucked up on a product. Now you got perspective like motherfucker. No, they're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it's always good just to try things. You know what I mean? And just you only live once, man. Like and what, what were you going to spend that five bands on anyways? Like fucking the only thing you're ever going to remember is experiences. Yes, that that's real. Damn. That's why travel is is so good to gain that perspective and you'll never forget that like going new places and seeing Damn. new things you just inspired me to go travel bro i never left the uh, continent yo what up it's Blackleaf. i'm here at grow generation and guess what drip hydro storm in the market all the best growers i know are switching to it and guess what there's a reason because it's preserving terps i keep hearing that preserving terps and that's why we're here with sunshine facility advisor facility manager overall the man with drip hydro listen to why it's different man what's going on guys sunny here with drip hydro thing is at the end of the day we just wanted to make a simple clean cost effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now nobody uses really our chelation formulas uh the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see and growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of terps back we wanted to bring the terps back and bring the soul back to grow versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace bro oh man i've been to mexico but that don't even really count but that notice how you said the story about the ashtray where were you You were in mexico that's why those ideas would be like bing 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 because cultures are different ways of life are different absolutely then you bring that back to here and put people on to like your version of it and it just inspires you i know a lot of guys like you even know a lot of guys that own restaurants and stuff and they travel around they'll come back and be like we're starting a new restaurant yeah and then it'll be a hit and everyone's like we never seen anything like this and they just went somewhere new and came back and was like we're gonna take that flavor put it with this and then boom we got a new concept man i would say too one of the most fulfilling things in life is taking an idea that is in your head from an inspiration and creating a product with it second we got to get blasi with us down walking through some fields of weed and shit like we got some trips coming up you haven't been international yet we got to let you know about some stuff we got (laughs) got colombia thailand all that oh dude for real i'm ready let's go (laughs) 
the back pocket. He's ready to go hit TJ right now. Let's go. Police took my driver's license. Bro, the only other people I know that travel around with the yeah. passports with a lot of money, if something happens, they're out. That, yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. That's oh, hilarious. God, I'm ready Yo. to go. Um, when you're hiring somebody, because you you basically train them from zero to a hundred. Yeah. What are you like looking for that. in a person? Because you're not even looking for like, oh, what have you done previously graphic wise? They haven't yeah. done anything. Yeah. I, you know, I think that, uh, yeah, I like to transform from the beginning and like from a business perspective, like, um, you know, someone who's like super talented at what they do, that they, they have already a price that they're going to, that, that they expect to get paid. And it's like, you know, I want to develop somebody and like train them from like zero to a hundred, you know? Um, my designers get paid well. I, I pay them well enough that like, they're not going to accept work from other people. You know what I mean? That's how you do it. <laughs> um, they're watching this like, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I pay you, but how do you set? I pay you $2, but you know what I mean? Who else is going to pay you $2? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you're only going to pay 50 cents or whatever. Yeah the ratio is but were you gonna ask me it's or is it organic growth like you meet people through friends and you're like oh, yeah that would work good here i've, I've only done one hire through a dm everybody else has been like in person uh we have a guy there at the warehouse who handles the whole warehouse his name is res short for resume i call him resume because at a stash and grab he walked up on me with a, a paper and an eighth of weed that says i want to uh, do warehouse work i'm like you're hired <laughs> <laughs> so you know awesome. him and uh it's you another know, tip right there is know what the fuck you want to do yes don't come and be like yeah. i'll do anything you that ever seen that viral jake paul video where it's like uh some dude like flew out somewhere and like to try to meet him backstage he was like bro i want a job and he was like oh what do you want to do and they like froze up <laughs> <laughs> Did you imagine? <laughs> oh, like, bro, you had to spend some time yeah. in the airport thinking of that. You took oh, a fly, but, drove uh, around a month of thinking about I, you want to work for uh, him, but uh, not uh, what uh, you want to get. I mean, I, I do anything. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's something that, like, we all kind of, like, would answer with. It's like, you kind of, you know, hard work beats talent where talent don't, or what do they say? I, I forget that shit. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I respect, I mean, I'm a hard worker. I was somebody, you know, to give you a little story. When I was working for Chinatown Market, like, the first, like, um, like the first like salary designer uh position i had uh four months fresh off of like working warehouse jobs still just hustling little graphics for like 100 200 but like a gang of them like 30 a month bro i'm, I'm hustling and uh you know i go to their office and on three different occasions they turned me down you know what i mean they're like nah this still ain't it i went three different times I'm like, oh, you fuck with this? like nah nah this ain't it this ain't it they felt i I mean, in my eyes, I don't know if Mike Sherman will agree with this, but I feel like they felt so bad for me. They're like, who has this motherfucker do, bro? It's like, they, they hit me up. They're like, can you do mock-ups for us? Like, literally just like black t-shirt PNG, put the graphic, send it to us. We need to post it on Instagram. I did that for them for like the first like three, four months. You know what I mean? And um, I think that uh, I ended up getting paid because he, he respected that. You feel me? Just because I was like, just really trying to get in there yeah, and he, awesome. he ended up hiring me as a designer just because shout out to uh, josh madden he's the manager of good charlotte he came into the office one day i was working on a a, a flyer for a thousand bad funny and comethazine and it was crazy it was hard i was the flyer motherfucker back in 2018 uh josh madden looked over my laptop he's like what this is hard like i need i need to hit you up for good charlotte and uh, I think Mike realized, like, damn, my clients are coming in to talk to the mock-up guy. All right, I got, I got to check this shit out one more time, you know. And then we made the, uh, you know, he hit me up. We started doing design projects, and then Lil Wayne came about Carter Five album, and uh, he hit me up like, "Yo, can you do a graphic?" I did it, and uh, you know, it was one of the best sellers for the album. You feel me for Carter Five, and from that moment on, he respected me as a side designer. Bah! You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mike Schneider taking a risk on me. But to answer your question, that's what I look for. You know what I mean? He, he also taught me how to be a boss. There's, there's a lot of things that I learned. Like yesterday I posted on my story. Like I don't want anyone at my office that's fucking around. Like, like you know, I, I, I'm, I, this ain't a playground. And then he just responds like, oh, it's funny to see you go through all these motions. He saw me from yeah. like, from not knowing what to do, like how to make graphics, how to send them to like doing this shit. So, you know, I, I just try to look for someone who's like hardworking. At the end of the day, like, you can't be passive aggressive. I'm big on that. <laughs> That's something that, like, one in ten people have, but it's just like, I can't stand that shit. Yeah. 
be real with me you know what i mean no one's getting physical ever you know what i'm saying like yeah. just be real tell me tell me don't fuck with what i'm saying you know what i mean yeah you can't pass the grade you gotta be a hard worker that's it so you gotta know how to communicate because mm -hmm. people that don't know how to communicate get passive aggressive Jeez, i hate crazy. that shit so much bro i'm a big communicator big communicator just say what's good i say what's on my mind you feel me yeah you ever I, like so these types of people you'd be like what's wrong they can't even tell you yeah yeah i don't like that that's shit. yeah and you can't it irks people. me it irks me you especially you could you could be passive aggressive do that with your mom do that with your girlfriend but like <laughs> you're at a business it's nothing personal here. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, yeah. don't put your don't put your emotions into it's literally on the box. It, <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. I, I used to have an assistant. Yeah. I had an assistant that was like hella passive aggressive, man. And it's just like you just he just walks in there and you just feel that shit when the clients are in. I'm like, bro, you just ruin you just kill everybody's high. For real though. <laughs> For real though. We've dealt with this in business before as well. Yeah. It's 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 a lesson learned harshly like you're like holy shit man yeah they oh, mean well but it's just like yeah. dude like that's a hard thing for them to like overcome and then you realize that. too you can't change nobody you can't you truthfully can't. you can't no nah, you can't yeah that's a big and thing it's about hard life. for you people cannot. to change when they don't see the problem what are a few of your favorite projects that came to fruition and you were just so proud like yo look what we did because i know you got so many hits right if you're like yeah. if you look at it say like, no to fan all shirt um because i was told by like people who are like who still have like big ass bigger brands than i do um telling me not to drop it because it wasn't my like i didn't have a reason I, I didn't have a platform to to speak on it you feel me and i was like well i had hella homies you know what i'm saying that like overdosed i've seen homies die from this shit i've had to like call 911 because my homies fucking non-responsive you know what i'm saying like I, i've seen this shit uh you know They're coming from la yeah you know what i'm saying Fuck. yeah bro yeah. and since There's, i've been a kid like i've i've grown up with a lot of like people who just like my like middle school best friend man shout out to my boy mowgli the fucking meth head just trailing the streets man it's just sad i've seen drugs affect a lot of people and um when it, when i'm when i made the perk 30 jersey at, the, at that point like 2019 perk 30 was like a meme oh when the 30 hits you know what i mean it, it was all oh, he's off a of perky he, it was a joke molly perkins said there's this gang of songs now, now people are like shameful to mention perks in music i feel um but for a while it was damn near like a, a internet joke so i made that not not realizing like this is some shit motherfuckers getting addicted to left and right right now 2019 we're talking uh i felt like i had to make a, a product just oh well it got deeper i always mention this in interviews um you know they uh uh people started selling these uh perks and like fentanyl pills on uh on offer up and craigslist and uh k cal and i did a special on it with the fbi and uh popped up it, it's it's on youtube um you know all you got search up was perk 30 jersey and it was like oh two dollars uh size 30 you know what i mean and it they, they were using it as code word to buy perks so I felt really bad at that point. I felt like, damn, now I'm like negatively affecting, you know what so I mean? My say community. no to fentanyl is kind of like a response back. It, yeah. And I'm I'm proud to say that that's like my best selling product. You know what I mean? That's a product that I'm always going to drop because it's like, that's a message I think we should all get behind. You feel me? It's not a negative message. You feel me? It's like, that's just fucked up. Everybody in this room knows somebody who's, who's like, who struggles with that shit or has passed away through that. And it's like, or sad gang of prison time because they were yeah. fucking dealing with the shit and then people die yeah or lost years of their life at the very least right? yeah years where just another, I, I know dealers that have like shamefully like hurt people you know what i'm saying i know fucking motherfuckers that do that shit that hurt all the motherfuckers around them you know what i mean they can't all you can do is learn world. from it and, and it only gets the other way yeah like you said okay i felt bad i did something that at the time and place i was like this is what i'll this is a vibe and then you realize later, like, I mean, I mean, it's dark, bro. We had a, um, you know, juice. We, we met juice for rest in peace. Well, my, uh, my partner at the, at the time house phone, uh, for that drop, we dropped it together. So he was promoting it with me and, uh, he had tapped in with juice world and juice world fucking posted a photo. And you know I mean, we, we got photos of him and, uh, you know, he passed a month later. You know what I mean? Do the same shit. And it's just like, it's dark. You know what I'm saying? You start realizing this shit ain't cool. That's a product that dropped once and that was done. You feel me? I was just like, I'm not like, dark motherfuckers, like I said, like 
if Arta still had him on the side, like, what? Well, I would have made a fortune. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. But that's not cool to like. I don't, don't want to like continue to entertain that shit. So you know, I kind of have that. Uh, that sure is just a statement. You feel me? And I, I'm proud to say that that's a product that like, shit. I get people all the time. Just shit. I ran into someone at Santa Monica Pier wearing that shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just ran up on him. It's like, what's up, bro? But you know, it's it's a um, you know, it, it's it, it's still a product that like people are wear, are proud to represent. And it's something that someone's going to walk up to you and be like, yo, thank you for wearing that. Or like, yo, like I know somebody or like, yo, that's crazy at the very least. You know, what um, about a few other projects <clears throat> that you're real proud of? Bank Bob Big Bands. You feel me? Mm -hmm. That was the uh, piggy bank. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Bank Bob Big Bands. Excuse me. Um, that was a, a piggy bank we did. Like I said, that was the first uh, custom product I made. And uh, I was really taking a risk at that point. I was just known as a T-shirt guy. Like I said, I was doing it for everybody. V loan as well. You know what I mean? Oh wow, yeah, really? What'd yeah. you do with them? Uh I designed the weekend and juice world collab. I did yeah. like three, four pieces for them. Um pulled up on Bari. We worked on it right there, you know. Um He's an interesting cat. For I sure. Him for a long time on Instagram. Yeah. Me too. You know what I mean? I've I've met him at the airport. Should I walked up on him like, yo, like uh you know what I mean? I was doing videos at the time, trying did, to edit videos. Did that help you get the opportunity later nah. on? No. Nah. No, nah, it just came from another stream of just connects. And but like, did he remember that? No, nah, I didn't mention nah. that. I'll, yeah. I'll mention that <laughs> maybe on like you the 10th. You were the dude in the airport. <laughs> I, I might mention on like the 10th, like kick it time. But like, I, yeah, I only, uh, we only linked up for that project. He hit me up. Um, His team hit me up for like some young boy shit later on. But uh, we, we were already busy at that moment. Um, But you know, just I had the streetwear background and uh, I never tried doing these products necessarily. Um, and this was the first thing we dropped the piggy bank and it went crazy. You know, I we first sold 300. Uh, it went viral as fuck on Twitter, had like millions of impressions and uh, it did its rounds. It sold. To be honest with you, it didn't sell too crazy the first day. I think the first day we sold like 100 of them, which like to me to the day that'll give me a heart attack. I'm like, damn, we did not do that. <laughs> But we, we we sold a hundred, which at, at at that time too, I'm like, hmm, like, I feel like we should have sold at least five hundred. But uh, you know, it, it it slowly sold, and then once we sold five hundred, it went viral on TikTok. It got like uh, this video got like two million views of just someone unboxing it. Another round of fucking sales, and there's a part of me that does want to drop it, but to like to complete like the story mode in my head, I want to do the official SpongeBob collab. Like Aiden Ross, he has it in the back of his uh his streams every day yeah that's fine yeah how'd you meet the no jumper crew how'd you so i met uh i met house phone in 2017 uh, i was doing nothing but like cover art and like flyers at the time this was before streetwear um you know give you a, a super backstory I'll, I'll i'll make this short i was really into music growing up tried making that shit you feel me i, was, shit, I play piano guitar bass I was trying to make rap music, you feel me? But the, to the age of like 18, I realized like, nah, that's dumb. I can't do that shit. I don't have a voice for it. My shit's hella nasally. And, uh, you know, I uh, I just started trying to find a ways to like be within the music industry. I was trying to engineer. I was recording my homies. Then I was uh, shooting music videos. I was just like your go-to, just creative dude. Like, oh, he'll do it. You know what I mean? Photoshop. So um, I was just doing my thing on Twitter at that point uh and just just met house phone through that just to give you the short end of the story uh and then from that we just kind of he, he thought i was like from minnesota or some shit like that i didn't make it knowing i was from la on like my twitter just minnesota. like soda just a random shit you know what i mean like he didn't think i was like some fucking kid from like la at the time um and yeah this is maybe like 2016 2017 and uh through that we just always kept the close connection um and uh, he ended up coming like 2020 like a couple years later he uh he hit me up like yo i'm about to start a show on no jumper finally which like at that point i probably made like three four appearances you feel me just popping out just showing love like i had known adam already for years at that point had you um, already done designs with them yet or no well you just read my mind adam's one of the first people to uh commission me for a project well not him directly excuse me but the one of the first t-shirts i like to claim it the first t-shirt is uh the take a shirt you know, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned before I got on camera, Dallas was fucking me wait for Cali was. Long story short, Dallas has had a creative community in 2017. My homie told me, go do flyers for motherfuckers from over there. That's the first time I ever got on a flight. I went over there. You feel me to Dallas? They showed me hella love. First day I got there, 
that's the day TK went viral, like June 31st, like 2017, something like that. It's like the week before uh, 4th of July. Um, but he was set to perform at a show that I was going to go to that night. Bro, there was like squad cars like crazy up there, you know, and that was my first time leaving Los Angeles. You feel me? So it's a big culture shock just experiencing. I, I realized what humidity was. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's <laughs> that's a big thing for the first time. But, uh, you know, they told me like, yo, uh, TK needs a T-shirt, bro. They're trying to free him. This is before he went viral. He was just going on say cheese and academics like, oh, this rapper's America's most wanted right now. You know, where is he at? He just killed somebody. And uh, they're like, he, he needs a free uh, take a shirt. So I took my cover art style and applied it to uh, the T-shirt design. You can search a free take a no jumper shirt. That's the one of the first T-shirts. That's, yeah, that dropped in July 2017. So Adam had been fucking with me. And, um, you know, yeah, we had probably like from like 2017 to 2020, we probably made like five, six shirts, not too many. But like he always kept me at, you know, around just to like oh i need this shirt like yo can you fuck with me on this um but we did that and then yeah 2021 i, I think it was 20 yeah it was december 2021 uh house phone just was like yo we about to start a show you trying to pop up i'm like yeah let's do it so we did the podcasting and uh you know that shit probably like tripled my growth you know what i mean like it exposed me to a whole new uh audience whereas like before it was just streetwear I was at like 30k followers at that point and uh you know i'd earned that from like zero just from doing like design and just 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 being known in like the streetwear community um but and, and I, I knew that as my life i already had an office i was already paying my bills doing my doing my thing for years at that point but once we did the podcasting thing i think that also allowed me to show my personality a little bit more you know what i mean so I think people gravitated towards that and they appreciated that I actually had like a, a product to sell at the end of the day. <laughs> well, you put a face to a brand and you're an approachable guy. Yes. So people feel like, let me just hit this dude up and see if, or let me see what they can. I bet businessmen hit you up, a lot of rappers, a lot of people for designs because it's very difficult to find a good designer. For sure. Yeah. So difficult. Parts of this whole yeah. Thing. I like to compare it to like a tattoo artist as well. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, yeah it takes like four or five years to get to that good quality that standard but after that it's really about the personality do i fuck with this dude is he cool you feel me like is he gonna be a dickhead that's kind of like that personality really helps out you know what i mean it's like um once you got that talent it, it's it's important also that personality to really like grow this shit that's why i realized like you don't gotta be like you know like what's up youtube you don't you don't gotta you don't gotta be corny or do anything extra just be yourself People want to know that, like, there's somebody like them out there. You know what I mean? Like, I always looked for that shit when I was 16, 18, 20, like, watching interviews while I'm cleaning. It's like, oh, I, you know, how can I relate to ASAP Rocky? Let me hear him talk for 50 minutes. You know what I mean? Um, uh, but, you know, doing the podcast, it, uh, uh, it, I had a lot of fun doing it. I still do. You know what I mean? This shit's, this is, uh, very much fun. Uh, I had a good time at No Jumper, you know? Yeah. You get a lot of people that are like, bro, I seen you on No Jumper yeah i'll say maybe like half the time mm -hmm. i'll like step out to like an event or like something like that it'll be like oh blazy i don't know if it's from no jumper as much but like i'll say probably like yeah i get like 50 percent probably know me from there for sure how'd you come up with your name blazy yeah that comes from a, a a long stem of name so like i'm 28 today right when i was in ninth grade that's like 2010 and uh there was this shit called uh, uh like donkey pun strawberry shortcake it was this stupid ass like sex jokes like just some kid shit uh dirty sanchez and uh i remember just telling my homie like oh uh, arabian sandstorm and then uh he just told me like hey shut up arabian sandblaster and then they just kept calling me sandblaster that day it's gonna make sense i promise <laughs> so <laughs> so once i got to like 18 i was doing street art like a motherfucker you know what i mean i was putting up posters we paste on uh, melrose that's how i really started like knowing how to like get creative seeing all shepherd fairy and like banksy alec monopoly all those motherfuckers jeffrey sif um I was doing that shit at Sound Blaster and uh, I got to the age of 18. I'm like, that's kind of like, sounds a little lame. And I liked how Kanye was like, Kanye, Kanyeezy, Yeezy, yay. So I'm like, Sound Blaster, Sound Blazzy, Blazzy. <laughs>
Damn. Yep. Yeah. Nope, though. Yeah. So I was like, Sandblaster. How are you going to get that out of that? Like, <laughs> how you going to tie those shoes? You even came over the name. Mm -hmm. But it's like graphic design. It's so like, unique. It's one on one. They're yeah. Like it's, filter. You what, what's interesting, this. it's like a uh, it's like a nickname or something like that in Africa. Like you search up Blazzy, like what's just scroll oh, down. Shit. It's just a bunch of African names. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's like a nickname over there. And uh, there, there's a couple people named Blazzy. There's like some doing like South America, some doing Europe too, like DJ Blazzy. Some like German motherfucker. <laughs> they hit you up like, yo, man. It's, yeah. it, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. You got to yeah. stop using that. <laughs> nah, hey, I harassed the dude on Blazzy on Instagram, like at B-L-A-Z-Z-Y for like years to the point where like, I might even act him a couple times. Try it. You know, you're like, I need that name. I need it so bad. I kept bugging them, like, yo, bro, I'll pay you. I think I offered him like five bands at one point. I'm like, bro, he wouldn't do it. Nah, he blocked my ass, man. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah, Shout out to like Blazzy, though, man. He's a he's a, a a film guy of sorts, man. In New York. I I know all this information. You guys got to collab, something. bring a full circle. Yeah, there you go. Well, one person that like I think it was a funny ass moment to me was uh, Blazy Susan. You know what uh, I mean? Because motherfuckers be looking at me, calling me Blazy sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, uh, they get mistaken sometimes for Blazy. They told me a funny story. This is a uh, uh, first uh, first smoke of the day exclusive. Uh, he told me one of the dudes at uh, um, Blazy Susan that Burner walked up to him and was like, bro, everyone's showing me your ashtray. That shit's crazy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's Damn. awesome. Yeah, that's funny. You know You're what like, I mean? Yeah, but yeah, bro. I met Blazy Susan <laughs> in like, January huh? at this convention. And then we just did one of like, oh, bro, like motherfuckers. Because people tell me like, bro, like what? Hey, like, you, so you drop like, uh, like cones, right? You drop joints? I'm like, ah, oh, that's Blazy Susan. And it was good Damn. to know that Blazy Susan runs into that as well with the whole Blazy thing. So shout out to them, man. They're good people. We want to we want to work on a uh, sun capacity one day. Yeah. You guys got to drop an ashtray. Yeah, yeah, something. yeah, right, man. Bless yeah. them with something, you know. Yeah, what are we gonna call it? Just Blazy Susan, huh? Yeah, just have to. Was it a big gamble when you were like, I need an office. I'm gonna take it out of like you know designing on the fly and stuff, and be like, I'm gonna put some money into what I do. Nah, just because like. I promise you story is going to make sense, right? Like, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I grew up and like to the age of like 16, 17, just living in the living room couch and like on the floor the whole time. So like, I always wanted a room and uh, my parents ended up building me a room when I was like 16. And, uh, once at that point I'm like, Oh, this is dope to just have a space where I could just work all day. You feel me? Just be on my laptop. You feel me? And, uh, at, at, once I got there, I was like, okay, I can't smoke here. So I didn't get an office till I was about like 21, 22, just doing like uh, graphics on the internet. We had one in East LA and then I got rid of that once I got my first apartment. And then from there, you kind of just return to the fact, okay, I don't want anyone fuck. I don't want everybody fucking farting on my couch all day. You feel me knowing where I stay at like that. So I, you get an office and, uh, yeah, I, I think that at that point, I, I, I just made it make sense. I encourage everybody who's like at that weird point where it's like, I'm making some income, but I can't afford $2,000 right now on rent. That's crazy. You know what I mean? Like what I encourage people to do right now is like, shit, link up with five homies. That's what I did. You know what I mean? We had a spot for about like three, four bands. And then we just all came together like, okay, you got 800, like you make fucking $20 a day or whatever that converts to probably not $20 a day. But, um, you know, like, can, can you make this money and, uh, $800, I could commit to that. You know what I mean? Let's do it. So it just stems from that. And then cool. One guy leaves now. Now my rent's a thousand. Okay. Now, now I'm taking over the whole thing. Now I actually need a bigger spot. So we found our spot. We found our, ourselves in that situation last year, 2022 J January was the, was when I got my first, like, like completely my own office top of last year. And, um, the top of this year we pushed out of there for like the warehousing so now i got another warehouse uh at another location and uh, now we're trying to get out of there because we've already packed that spot out damn so now I'm, well like people ask me what's in my mood board and shit like that what do i envision there ain't shit there but a fucking black iron gate bro i want a compound that's all I want. I just want one of those downtown. I need a spot in Santa Fe Springs. I need a spot in Paramount. You know what I mean? Just like a industrial. I need specifically the Black Iron Gate, that flat motherfucker that you can't. None of that. Like I, I just envision that with this private parking lot. Uh, I won't sell for anything less moving forward.
Can't wait for my lease to be over. Just goes to show you the value of betting on yourself. Yes. How quickly it yeah, continues I can't. to level up. Well, yeah. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with just having a space like that right now, but like that's been the only thing on my mind for like the last nine months. Like, I don't know. I just love those Most spots. Most people I are thinking lie. about an outfit or a, a, a chain nah. or a car. Well, I think that's that, that's that's the blessing of working in streetwear is like, you know, this shirt is mine. Um, my homie made this. And these pants and shoes are just something I just bought. But like most of the stuff is like either I try to make sure at least with the shirts, like it got to be yours. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm big on that. So to this day, like make your own shit. Yeah. Especially if, if I'm being on camera, like it's going to it's going to be my own shit. Um, but I, uh, I I'm blessed with having a lot of homies that got brands. So I don't really spend too much money on like clothes. And I make clothes too. So what? Like whenever I like, if I'm gonna buy like some designer shit, like I'll buy it for like low key, like research and development purposes. Like I'll be like, okay, this is what takes a thousand dollar product. You know what I mean? Th this is how you do it. Shit costs so much these days. You might as well just make your own. Bro, I be I was thinking I'm about saying. that today in the gym. Just like even like the gym clothes I like, like ASRV and all these brands, like they're expensive as fuck. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I, I wanted to start making my own shit. Bro, listen, like, for two, three hundred dollars, you can make a helmet, you can make a pair of shoes, you know what I'm saying? Everything yeah. in between from top to bottom. Most of the cool shit, dope fly shit's at two, three hundred, if not a thousand, you know what I mean? So it's like a thousand, you can get a couple sample shit. So, you know, like before you buy some Amiri jeans or some gallery pants, um, think about what you could do and what you could produce with that money. Shit, like right now, I've always wanted to buy like a, a like a Rolex, right? I haven't bought one yet. And I told myself, cause I'm always out once I get that, like that, that once I always had that money, I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna spend that on production. Like what? Come on. And I told myself, all right, cool. For this specific budget, I'm developing these, th th this specific product. And this is going to get me the watch. I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to do it with that one this time. You're like a vintage presidential guy. Yeah. I can sure. see you rocking something like, so then yeah, what? I like so the yeah. different shit. So yeah. then what? <laughs> you make it and then you just keep tripling down. Yes. Yeah. I'm big on that, bro. Because, of, bro, the longer you delay that gratification. I'm backwards, dog. Like, I, I like to have, like, a specific amount in my bank account and just spend That's until I hit that amount. I'm backwards. What do you mean? Like, let's say I want to have, like, I'm going to say around a number $3, you know what I mean, in my account, right? And I have $10 that day. I'm going to spend everything I get so I get to $3 on just investing in myself. Not buying bullshit. I'm gonna buy some weed. I'm gonna I'm smoke up, but nah, like 95% of that's going back into my business. Like real shit. I love like, man, I'm a business trick. I love spending money on graphics, <laughs> on 3D files, you know what I mean? On samples. Yeah. That shit's fun. So it's yeah. like 70 to 80% of what comes back in goes straight back into the business. It's like, yeah. yeah. Like I, I was about to say the numbers, but not 95. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's smart. Everyone has a number, right? Where they're like, this is, gets reinvested. Yeah. Most people just take a draw. It's tens of thousands, like on the weekly basis, just yeah. on like, all right, let's get this produced. All right, let's get this sampled. Let's pay this motherfucker to make crazy video. Let's, 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 let's get the 3D file. What's your biggest stranglehold right now? Um, like where you're at in business or, or with design? Something that you taxes. keep running into. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ta well, just understanding how to pay people like properly. You know what I mean? I, I pay all my people. I got people on salary. You know, I got people on commission. I got people on like on a on a um, on an hourly, and um, I I I don't have no bookkeepers. I just got my own business account uh, last September. <laughs> it marks a year now, and uh, that's definitely like I'm. It's it's so backwards. People will make sure that people like when they start a business, they get the big ass book, the LLC. Where if, I never even seen one day in my life. I own a couple, but like. Like, nah, like, I, like, I, I don't, they don't teach you that shit sucks. You know, I'm so focused on creativity and like how to get this shit done. I, f I forget that, like, you got to run it properly, you know, cause then you gotta, you're going to have to pay the government. You know what I mean? While you could have this whole time been documenting that you are paying employees and you're doing it properly. You would have been, <sighs> you know, if anyone's out there, if anyone wants to do it, man, let me know. But, uh, yeah, I think that's, that, that's my, that's my only, uh, problem. You feel me? But like beyond all that, like I'm very thankful that I have a machine to uh, to pump products. You know what I mean? I'm able to communicate with my audience and uh, I'm going down with this ship. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm going to rep this shit till it's done. You feel me? Um, I just want to keep making bigger and bigger products uh, and making things more affordable. Like I'm big on that. Like 
I'm, like I said, I'm jealous of music. You feel me? Like you selling a product for free. I mean, it costs a subscription or watching an ad, but like it's essentially free. You know what I mean? Look at someone like Hot Cheetos. Like you could, people buy one at least once in their life. You feel me? But there, there are certain people that buy one every day, buy one every week, every month. And they only do that because it's so affordable. It's a dollar ninety nine. You know what I mean? Like I'm so jealous of that. What? I'd be telling the homie, bro. Like I, I feel like I gotta reinvent the wheel every every fucking week when you gotta you gotta fire like Nashville hot chicken spot. You're good. You can sleep in. That I mean, I, I under no disrespect to any like restaurant owners. I'm sure it's way deeper and harder than that. Also, the margins are way different than Ashtray shit. You're selling like six dollar meals. Probably cost you four dollars to make. But you, well, you open your doors. There's people coming in. Absolutely, yeah. That's the difference. I wish, like, I, I want to get into restaurants one day. I think, like, I just want to try it out. I think I got like a, a fresh perspective on it. My dad grew up. Uh, you know, I mean, he's a he's a chef. Uh, he's a uh, he cooks for like weddings and like quinceañeras and shit on the weekends. And uh, I'll, I'll be down to to follow through with that you feel me <laughs> create that experience man yeah yeah exactly yeah Custom and some experience bro i mean like what like how you said like your boy goes out to travel he makes a restaurant man like bro shit i might travel to uh fucking pomona <laughs> to paramount and uh, go to a mexican restaurant and just trip out on the fact that like orient italian spot like they give free bread they give free chips like my spot's gonna give free something that's so yeah. dope you know what i mean i remember when i was a kid brother there's this mexican restaurant we used to go to i learned at like early age i mean just like everybody does not even anything to brag about but like they they give chips and like you know salsa for free so we used to go there for lunch i started right after school and just like eat chips and salsa from we're about to order some shit and we'll just make lemonade with like the sugar and like the lemon right there <laughs> i don't know Sorry. how this story correlates but you know, to help my business right now is taxes. No, taxes and bookkeeping. The, to give, it's the rule of reciprocity, right? Where if you give someone something, they're going to give you something back. Mm -hmm. So the free chips and the free drink and, you know, stuff like that, it's, uh, it's hospitality. It's the business. You know, mm -hmm. it's the business you're in. Like someone, you came today and you're like, you know, you want a water or something like that. And it's like, we hook you up with the water. It's like, you know, right Hell away yeah. you gave us these ashtrays. We're like, oh Hell shit, yeah. it's got to. It's just that's this how, is that's this how is my chips and salsa right here. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's a good one and right shit. there. I'm, oh, we man. keep that shit for a while. Is them dank chips? Y'all definitely gave up. me some chips and salsa. Oh, yeah, Jesus you, Christ, bro. man. Yeah, yeah, we got you for real, Woo. man. Man, but uh, what's a day though? Like you, you, I know. Like one of the big things we're talking about is you have to get back to the office today. Yes, <laughs> bro. That's big of you though, being the boss and still being like, you know what? I want to make sure yeah no i'll tell you this I'll, I'll tell anybody watching this right now you do not want to be a boss <laughs> 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 they don't fucking lie when they say like you know you're the last one to get paid like i said like that whole money shit is just numb to me because it's like yeah you got bills but also you got like 12 other motherfuckers you got you got you know help out um and you know you're gonna look crazy the day you say like you pull up with a fucking spongebob chain saying i can't pay you no more <laughs> you feel me you're gonna look stupid so now i'm like now i gotta pay to play i gotta yeah. pay to it, it costs to be a boss i didn't know what the fuck that meant i thought that was just some stupid shit rappers say nah it really costs you can't Jesus. just go fuck off the whole bag no never not bro i don't even like i like if i get a bag like a crazy one like I'll, like a backflip type bag like i'll just go buy some shoes and like fucking pour up that night and that's it you feel me i'm not like i'm not going to i'm not catching no jet i'm not buying no cars none of that it's like i said the day i pull up with a fucking spongebob chain around my neck talking about ah, i'm gonna look crazy so i can't ever do that like that's a lot of people the car. <laughs> what's i think is 50 cent talks about if your biggest asset is your image you're it, it won't be long you're on your way to falling off you're done Ooh. you know you just kill me with a crazy quote. That's insane. Yeah. I love and that you know one. what? Another thing too about just making your own shit, right? There was I saw this clip with this kid and he's literally talking to these suppliers at like a trade show and stuff. And he's showing blank samples that Louis Vuitton and all these high-end mm -hmm. brands charge a thousand dollars for the shoe. And he's like, how much? And she's like, that, that one's seven dollars. I saw that same shit. You know what I'm talking about? Just know that, that clip like, took us to like, Vegas to that same convention. Fuck. Really? I took must my ass to Vegas a couple days later. Or something, right? Where? Yeah, where, where I mean, that? which convention was that? That was the. Uh, it wasn't mad. I, 
I don't remember the exact same name, but it was a couple like it was like three, four weeks ago. Bro, we, we flew just, out we to that shit. We into Agenda trade show and shit. Asked oh, for the man. wristband, Long Beach and stuff. Yeah. And just go in there and like, you know, like I remember, you know, listening to like John Buscemi, Jerry mm-hmm. Lorenzo, Jeff Staple, yeah. Bobby Hundreds. All these guys are just giving game, teaching game. Like, yeah. You would go there for that to like, you know, buy a ticket, listen to them, teach and shit like yeah. that or give game. And then we'd be like, fuck, let's just sneak into the trade show. Yeah. See yeah. What, like what everyone's going to be dropping next year. So then we're when we're making shit, we kind of, we're inspired. Like we, we have a little bit to base off of like uh-huh. what's hot, what's not like where people are thinking. And that whole process is just so much fun, man. Like, yeah, uh, there's really nothing like it. And getting right. inspired. Yeah, for like sure. Getting that inspiration, right? And Walking it takes around. a while to figure love, out like your lane. I love that. Yeah. You're going to do that's shit. the hardest thing. I'll tell that to anybody watching. It's like, yeah, that's the biggest question. Like, fuck, what's the first thing you put out? Oh, I don't know. I want to put that out. Oh, I don't know. It's very hard to build that identity. That is hard. I'm not going to lie to you. Still to this day, I don't draw brand logo shirts because I'm like, I don't think I can sell them. You feel me? I don't think I got that identity yet. I definitely do, but I don't want to sell them. Um, but uh, I don't know where the fuck I took this conversation. So the, as far as your, your stuff, what ends up like you said there's checks or boxes you check off like what ends up making it and what ends up just getting the shelf like how do you um, draw that line you just look at that motherfucker and be like that's the one like now i've developed it like i i'll literally look like uh, we got a sample yesterday and like i always tell him that like, we had to see a sample before we get it you you just some things you just can't define bro um i we got a sample yesterday i looked at it i'm like we need two thousand of these you just look at things and I just, Felt I just, it. you just know. Do you ever take people's opinion or do you keep that blocked out? Uh, no, I'm, I'm a big, I'm big on uh, sourcing opinions. Okay. Big on that. Whoa. Like, bro, what? I, I hit up. How like, do you know who to listen dozens to? Dozens of people. Who not? Uh, successful motherfuckers. <laughs> they got to be you know in a I mean? position where you're. Yeah. Like, like, you know, homies that like got bigger brands than me. Also like my peers, you feel me? My designers, my team, people like my confidants, you know what I'm saying? People that I just like trust and respect. Also like consumers, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's like smart consumers. Like yeah. They know their shit. Well, not only that, but it's kind of like how Carl's Jr. would like just tell people like average Americans, like, yeah, come by, come taste the new fucking burger we're making, you know? And like, let me get your opinion on it. Um, whenever people come to my office, I always get an idea of like, I get a vibe check on like what products they like more. You feel me? So that also helps me a lot. Like, um, rest in peace day one. You know, we we thought of this fucking last March. That's a year and a half ago. You know what I mean? Like things like this, just like you just gotta take a moment. Okay, I gotta look at this for two, three months. I gotta ash it. I gotta fuck with it. You gotta sit on it. That's why you gotta make fifty other things just to sit on other things throughout the weeks. But you know, you just gotta uh you, you got to really experience the product and I've made a lot of mistakes in the past where a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda moments where it's like, damn, this probably would have been dope. It feels like this. Just me staring at the box all night. Like, hmm, damn, that would have been dope. It feels like that. Like shout out to Lee Spielman from Babylon. Um, when he, when I, when I dropped the bank, Bob, he told me, uh, uh like, bro, this is so dope, but the next product you got to have it numbered. Cause I think people will really fuck with it. And, uh, the next product right after that was Nigo, my Migo. And uh, yeah, we just penciled them in. It was like out two fifty. Did it sold out? You know what I mean? So um, that shit, that shit really works because it's. I mean, if you even look at like Rolls Royce and cars and stuff, they do that shit. Yeah, and it's a flex because they're like, yo, it was only fucking mm-hmm. fifty of these. It's days, a little harder to do it now. One, you know, <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, but uh, sure. it became a trend. Yeah, we we definitely sit on products, bro. Like. Oh man, I wish I had my keys on me. I want to show you this thing we're actually gonna drop at PuffCon a couple of weeks. I don't know when I don't know when this video is gonna come out, but PuffCon's last Saturday of the month, September. Um, but I got this dope ass product I wanted to show y'all that's nothing in the market. Like it's insane. You can have a booth Fire. there, or you can be just I'm, I'm gonna have a booth. Oh yeah. Yeah. hell yeah. I made Fire. sure because I know that uh, you know, the um the dad market's picky about out. products. You know what I'm saying? Like they're uh uh they walk around with their nose up. You know what I mean? <laughs> the heady boys. Yeah, exactly. Boys. Yeah. You can identify by the little pendants. You the did. little glass yeah. pendants. 
<laughs> they got their little they got their little case their little pelican, pelican case, case bro yeah. hey yeah. you want to talk about like spending money bro <laughs> these motherfuckers be dropping like 60 70 bands. my my boy he's a rapper man shout out to jd that fool has like an 80k glass piece and he was like nah come to my crib check that shit out I don't know how much I can spend money on that. I would lose my mind. I'd be like, Crazy. bro, that's like 10 products. You can make 800K off of that. Yeah. You feel me? But like, um, b- back to the story, bro. Like, uh, I-, I just wanted to drop a product that was that uh, with that in mind. So I made sure it was a, a medical grade titanium. You know what I mean? Uh, this, uh, the- I don't win the Hetty Boys over for sure. Yeah. Big selling point. That- that'll tilt their head. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yo, your shit's gonna be sold out right away. Yeah, so I'm excited. Motherfuckers are just gonna actually come straight there and shout buy to that J- shit out. Shout out to Jolly Roger, man. We were actually talking about him right before we got on camera. Good dude, man. Rip, yeah, shout out, super to dope. Um, but uh, I sent him. You know, we're gonna be dropping a T-shirt and be promoting it in a, in a week or two. Um, and I asked him what do you think about it, and uh, he was like, "This is dope." But uh, by the way, like the. Uh, yeah, he said like the 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 heady boys like they don't really like uh, this type of wax. Like uh, I put diamonds on there. <laughs> he was like, oh nah, I don't gosh. like that. <laughs> so he saved me, man. He's real. <laughs> yeah, for he real. knows like Blazzy. Yeah. You know, like he he means well, guys. Like yeah. give him a chance, but Blazzy you don't like diamonds though. Remove yeah, that yeah. shit. Well, because from a design <laughs> aspect, you're like hell yeah. Yeah, but I yeah, it's even yeah, from like a like having the diamonds. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone wants that live rosin. You just you just read ninety two percent. You're like, what the fuck? I need that right there. <laughs> yeah. That's dope though. You guys are dropping a a, a shirt as well. Mm-hmm. Official mm-hmm. PuffCon shirt or something separate? Well, that's what I was asking them. So I said, like, yo, like they said we encourage you to make a a, a shirt for the event. And I'm like, all right. Oh, you know, um, I'm big on business, so I'm like, let, let's just get this awkward conversation out the way. Like, what's you know what we're doing is like, oh no, we just want you to represent, you know, what we got going on. So shout out to them; they're good people. But uh, you know, it it is a uh, puffco inspired. Like, you you're not gonna want it unless you be doing, you know, you be fucking with the the puffco, which which I'm proud to uh just to make it exclusive on that on that extent. It's like okay, like random streetwear homie ain't gonna want this like this is like you're in the you're in the wax so you want to you want to tell people this at 7-eleven when you walk in it's a dope match <laughs> too because it's like a one-off blazy times puff con slash yes puff sir con. are you doing complex con uh this year nah man well you know what i don't know um i i, I don't i didn't sign no ndas for this shit but uh you know my boy that is like one of the directors over there he wanted to uh plug me in with like uh doing some shit there i haven't heard much of it i don't think it's gonna happen they gotta get you there bro yeah i mean they'll they'll figure it out yeah, the thing got. is i mean i've already dealt with uh industry motherfuckers you yeah. know what i mean like i've already done the email threads type clients like a lot of these people are very late when it comes to responding you know what i mean as far as what, what i mean responding is just like understanding what you are and like what you represent they're always like oh can we work now and it's like it's literally years later <laughs> you know what i mean like when it's like all the cool motherfuckers they just get it you know what i'm saying runs face clan umg shit v loan like they just see it they're like okay let's do this you know it, it's the people with the crazy bags they're like uh, 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 i don't know mm, he will let you know and then nothing happens and then they hit you two years two years later they're too far from the actual yeah, process yeah and they they just they don't want to take risks they they look they look at spreadsheets all day and they gotta make they gotta make it make sense for their investors so yeah is i've already dealt with that world that's just it's shitty. tough it's tough dealing with big companies and corporations because you gotta have like you said 100 meetings just to get one thing <sighs> done and it just fucking kills off all your momentum and <laughs> hey i don't know what about what's about those jobs but those got the most passive aggressive motherfuckers <laughs> i'm just gonna put like that, that out there yeah you're in motherfuckers do not meetings a day you yeah can fucking bottling some shit up for sure yeah, he turns yeah. to american psycho literally <laughs> yeah patrick move, bateman yeah worrying something about worrying about bone text is there the something you're cooking up now or collab you could talk all about the time bro i'm not kidding when i, I hold on let's let's see if i can pull it up on my phone Whoa. You know what I got to show y'all later, but uh, I literally have a, um, you know, I forget, I'm a stoner. You feel me? I'd be smoking all day long. Like I forget everything and uh, I have to write all my products down. So we have a, a, a product matrix of around like 136 products. Um, 
Holy shit. About 30 of those have already been made. We we made it last October. We we're just looking back at that. And um, you know, I want to show y'all just That's just, incredible, bro. Yeah. Just that just to shows show y'all work that, ethic. Well, that and it just shows y'all how fried I am. Like I need something like this just to fall back oh, on. Dude, and nah, everybody gotta write it down. Yeah. Nice. Like we just updated this yesterday, y'all. Oh shit, it's downloading. It's gonna take oh no, it's going quick, cool. So this is like these are just all concepts right here. Dark orange, dark uh uh fucking yellow, I guess you say. Those are like we're looking for manufacturers. Yellow is those are samples getting made. These are all individual products, mind you. Like wow. These all have like individual just notes. These are all different things. That's why when people reach out, you're like four to six months turnaround because you have this many projects oh, a year. working. What? Yeah, a year, exactly. So these are samples, just things yeah. that I'm just throwing in there. Orange in the production, works. just like full blown, like hard production. Like that what's your average time from idea a year to sample a year and maybe a half right now, maybe two years sometimes. Fuck. A Becky, lot of people aren't Becky, willing to we wait made that, that long, like bro. 2021. That's why you're in a league. 2021. Year yeah. You know, you just, that's what I'm saying. Like, shout out to KO. He does all of uh, Lyrical Lemonade's uh, 3D stuff. You know, he helped us out with this project. That's my boy. Shout out to my boy KO. Um, but, uh, you know, we made this 2021, you know, but it's like, you got to have fucking, you know what I'm saying? You got to have the rainbow <laughs> looking Excel sheet just to look forward to something every week you know green are things that are on the way right now from china blue are yeah. just <laughs> look at the blue right blue is all things that we gotta make edits on it ain't too much right now green is like these are ready to go but they're back to produce man i'm talking like 30 40 bands to like get certain products made but they're guaranteed bangers they're guaranteed to make money you know what i'm saying so it's like we, whenever we hit these bags we're like okay Let's get one of these green products. We need we need a Man, at least a any boy. smart business guy will come get with you after watching this episode and hearing oh, about yeah. this shit. Yeah. Help you with your taxes. <laughs> help you with all that type of shit. Hey, bro, you help me with my taxes, man. You I'll I'll I'll, I'll fucking make you ash tree whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> help me save some money. Yo, I'll somebody make you come some help money. my man with his taxes for sure. That that, is that, so that'll definitely happen, though. bro. That is so impressive yeah. to juggle that many. And then also the way your mind works, where you're like, once we're doing well on other stuff, now let's reach into this where it takes 30, 40 grand to make this product. And let's do one of those now. Yeah. The top one we think would, it, it's yes. the way you structure your mind and the way you've structured your business. It's very creative, but it leans into like you being able to produce these products consistently at all different tiers. Uh huh. It's unbelievable, yeah. bro. It's really cool. To Thank see. you so much. I mean, it starts with a fucking, everyone has a little notepad they get from Target. Like, okay, cool. I got to do this. And then it goes to notes and they're like, fuck, I wish I could put details and I can move things around. All right, let me learn Excel. Then fuck it. I still don't really learn it that well. I know how to color code and like type notes in there. So that works for me. But uh, now we developed that list last, last October. We used to have it on the whiteboard, but then you just drive yourself crazy trying to like, Ugh, let me wipe this shit off. But um, that's good advice too. Bro, the biggest thing takeaway that I have from this is that you're your ability to delay the gratification, you're yeah. going to end up extremely successful. Not that you already aren't right now, uh -huh. but it's going to be extreme success because you continue to compound. That humbles me, man. Thank you so much. A Appreciate year and that. a half to two years to wait on something to come to life is, is in this day and age, this generation, bro, people want it in a day or two it's on some a, Amazon Prime. It's shit. a weird feeling. I'm going to keep it real with you. Like, I don't want to like sound disingenuous or anything like that, but it's a weird feeling knowing that like, it's products that are already done and shit like that that are sold out. <laughs> you know what I mean? That are done. Like, I just need to post it. You know what I mean? Thank God. I don't mean to, like, brag about shit like that, but it's, like, I'm very aware of, like, where I'm at right now in my life, and, like, I'm very thankful. And, uh, yeah, most of these products are, like, from two two years ago. Like, the shit I'm making right now, I'm thinking of, like, yesterday, last week, those, like, early items, like, let's see where we could find a manufacturer first. Those are products that you're not going to see for another two years, like, the next two years are always like done with the brand at least, you know, and then we fill in, you know, there's always fun collabs, puff con, shit like that. So, you know, we get in where we fit in. What would be some advice specifically to cannabis brands? You've worked with cannabis brands now and there's a lot out Packaging. There. I don't mean to cut you off. Oh, yeah. But like, like I said, I'm a big consumer, man. I used to be, uh, you know, I grew up broke and um, I used to go to a 90 cent store for like a dollar and just see like, hmm, what could I buy? I just stroll around there. <laughs> I just go to a liquor store and just look at shit. And uh, that's never left me. And uh, whenever I look at products, I just always stare at it. And I always try to like, um, try to find like a better way of uh, 
just make packaging. You know, I think uh, wax is like, I'm starting to buy it like exotic, exotic, like rosin and shit like that. And uh, it's cool. Most of the guys got like stickers on it. You know what I mean? It's one long ass sticker. The problem is like, you got, you got to fucking rip that shit. You got perforated. You know what I mean? So I was talking to my homie, like they got first developed some with like little dots just to be able to open it once. And I think it's a little obsolete the way it's kind of like packaged. I think that like, um, what Nick did at runs with the, with the die cut bags was like amazing. I think like Mylar is probably like the best solution when it comes to packaging weed. I think like, you know, I mean, y'all have seen it as well. It's like, it started from fucking, you know, a, a nickel bag, you know what I mean? And then it got weird in 2010 or 2012, 2015 when it's like in a fucking pill capsule. And then it's like, and then 2020, they become in jars and they're like fucking exp you feel weird throwing them away. You know, like, is this expensive? You know, and uh, jars were stupid in my opinion i think it's like dope to preserve the weed i mean i, I don't know if you guys drop some jar products but like uh i i think that like mylar it's like you could have a thousand bags in a backpack you know what i mean you can't put a thousand jars it's, it's oh you gotta fucking loud as fuck cliff yeah i had to, it's I fucking had, insane we dropped jars for black people before and it was like it's a fucking nightmare yeah it's just palettes. storing them and for they, they fucking treat months the customers treat them the same way as uh, uh mylar bags they use them as ashtrays or they throw them away you know what you know what i like about the mylar bag was it, and is is that it pushes the culture mm. it makes you a fan of the brand yes it keeps them excited for important. the next drop yeah it's not just a jar with a logo you don't really get that feeling with a jar but with yeah. the die cut you know, we with LB and she, he's pulling out a turkey leg. He's pulling out this. He's pulling out that. You're like, yeah, what the fuck? Exactly. It's just crazy. It just opens your mind up mm -hmm. and makes you excited to see what's inside. Yeah. Whereas a jar, it's just, it's I don't know. It's it's different. It's a totally different feeling. So going from like a Ziploc baggie where it was just kind of like, you know, lick it, fold mm -hmm. it up, whatever. Even before the Ziploc, right? Like a sandwich bag to a Ziploc to the Mylar. The Mylar gives you that experience. It gives you that feel and it lets a brand differentiate their product from another person's product, like Don Murphos to Runtz. You get a totally different feeling when you get those bags, even mm -hmm. though they're alike. The product yeah. is alike. The bag it's separates it, you know, it's and an people icebreaker. save them. They put them on their fucking walls. Yes. Like it's it made people a fan of cannabis brands. Yeah, I collect them. Brand. Yeah, like a lot, yeah. Well, and for the people that say like, oh, I like a jar because I think my weed stored better. It's all in the quality. I've had shitty jars that the weed gets dry in a, a day or two. I've also had cheap yeah. mylars. Like, but for me, one of the things I do like about mylars, when I look at jars, usually there's open space where light can get in. And so what happens with old weed, if it's been sitting out in the light for a month, it turns yellow and orange. Mm. That I have not seen happen in these. And now they're coming up with trays to protect the it getting crunched down. They're coming. I'm a big fan. It took me one time. I had taken 10 pounds in jars mm -hmm. and I was going to get like, and there wasn't even weed in them. It was just packaging, but it yeah. was like, hey, go deliver these. I It was $640 to just ship jars, right? Nothing crazy, just <laughs> ground. And at the same time, I'm like a big guy. I was like, I'm carrying these things. Yeah. I'm sweating going into the post. And I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. This is truly like, I didn't realize that side of it till you're on the other side. Cause you know, you're at a warehouse, you're a grower, you're a producer and you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, jar it all up and use the pallet jack. The people who are end you like, Oh, let me take a pound or let me get uh, an ounce and a half. You're literally like this. You're you have a yeah, ding, ding, deliver it to all the shops. It's crazy. crazy. But it just shows you where it's, it's going. a nightmare, but it's less of an experience. The Mylar is yeah. uh, the brand gets to express the identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is dope as hell. I, I think die cuts are still fucking fire. Like, this is sick. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, die this cuts are the packs all day. You know what I mean? And I, I think it's, uh, um, it's just dope to, uh, I, I think that like, someone who's really killing it right now is imperial club or uh may may's bodega yep. you know we uh we help them out we've been helping them out for the last couple of years with uh, some of their packaging products and um we helped them make that uh um what do you call that the uh, the happy meal box yeah we yeah. made that for them um and that's a product where it's like i can't take credit for for her uh concept and her her thought process behind that you know what i mean that's dope 
And uh, I think that she's doing it right where it's like, cool, I want to set myself apart. And Dom Murphos, you know, we helped him make the, that trap house and that shit was hella fucking fire. You know what I'm saying? I love that box. I love seeing people post that shit. What? Come on. And, uh, you know, I think that they're, they're dope individuals and, and, and uh, you know, Dom Murph also got this box. I think it's, I think it's more common than I, I think it is, but uh, it got like a song that plays whenever you open it. It's like these promo boxes, you know what I mean? That shit's dope. I think it's all about the packaging. At the end of the day, you want somebody. You don't want to buy Instagram ads, man. You want somebody to do that shit for free. You got to want to. You want to do. Want to have someone do that shit willingly. You want somebody to to be on Instagram like, oh, this shit's hard because it gives someone a reason to watch your story. <laughs> you know what I mean? This one forgot the cool shit on the story, man. Look like at this product. You know, it's gonna have people respond to it. You know, because like. At the end of the day, you go to my career, you go to my office. It's a lot of my products, but it's a lot of other people's shit. You know what I mean? Stuff like this where it's like, I'm a fan of just like products. I'm a fan of like creativity. So, you know, I just take my consumerism and, and the stuff that I post on Instagram. I just take a look at myself. Like, okay, how can I get to my customers and how can I get my customers posted? You know, I've taken a closer look and, uh, you know, what the way I promote shirts is the way I treat, the way I see my customers post them on Instagram. You know what I mean? If you want to get deep about it, that's a conscious thought I've had, you know, where it's like they're posting it on the floor. Let me do the same. Let me record a video of the graphic the same way someone's going to do with a fucking song on their story. And that shit translates to motherfuckers. See that shit on my Instagram, I swear to God. Wow. You know what I mean? That's something that like I've, uh, um, I'm just a big, uh, I'm a big student. You feel me? I'm, I'm always trying to learn more and I'm so thankful that I have all this data to, to learn from. You know what I mean? I don't take any shit for granted. Like I do a lot of <clears throat> like internal research and just finding ways to like build my shit up. I could tell you like how much, um, you know, like quantity I should get based off of like a post, like virality and within 10 minutes. Okay. got this likes in 10 minutes. I got to get a thousand. I need, I need 500, 90, 2000 of these. I think that uh creativity. That's some shit that corporations aren't even on. No. If you ask me, they have <laughs> no, no idea. Not. No, they're not. They're out of touch. You have to be very immersed in your what you're doing. Hands on. Yeah. Yeah. It it takes passion. You feel me? And I don't think anyone's gonna be more passionate at this shit than I am. Like I br live and breathe this shit. This is like I think this is fun. You know what I mean? Like if I, when I was working these warehouse jobs, I was into all this shit too. All all the cool shit at the fucking swap me. All the cool shit at that at the smoke shop at Goodwill. Oh, at dream. that at that time, were you consuming more than you were creating? Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, I didn't make products till I was like. You know, even t-shirt designs, I was doing t-shirt designs for motherfuckers till I was like, uh, like 24, 25. And that's why I made the perk jersey. The perk jersey is the first product to have a nothing personal tag on it. Um, so from that moment on, I learned how to uh, develop products on my own. But early on, yeah, my crib had like fucking posters, had random ashtrays from eBay. How'd you make that switch? Um, Because now I feel like you create. Way well, more it, it's, it's, it's the hardest thing as a, as a, um as a graphic designer on the internet, as a, as someone just that comes from that industry, that like that background, it's the hardest fucking thing to make your brand because you, you literally get stuck on the fact that you could get paid, you know, a fraction of what they're going to get paid off of it. The, the brand owner, but you could get paid, you know, your 200, 300 bucks and that's cool with you. And for me, that was my life for like a couple years. Now I was, thumbing through these clients you know what i mean don't get me wrong but um i was cool with just selling you know one design while they're making like a hundred thousand off of it you know what i mean like i think it was a big eye opener um when uh when face clad did the optic gaming collab uh this was september 2021 this is right when coochie runs dropped too uh me and my team same dudes they were nine months eight months fresh one's from southgate one's from Boyle heights one's from fucking west covina these just random dudes from the street. You feel me? Uh, we designed that whole collection for them and it fucking, it was in the, let's say the seven figures. Yeah, I was going to say made I mean? M's, I bet. Yeah, M's. You know what I mean? And that shit was so eye open. That open. And that, at that point, I was already like nine months into my brand, but like now I don't do any like, you really got to like, you got to be like a good homie of mine to get like a graphic for me. You know what I mean? Or UMG, I, I respect that. I fuck with UMG, not going to lie. Uh, and I, I got my clients, you feel my short list, but like 90% of the projects I have my team work on is just nothing personal. You know what I mean? It's that, that's how it is. Um, and that shit ain't nothing personal, man. Yeah. Because it just <laughs> yeah. makes sense yeah. for like, for like on, on, a, on a timetable, you know, like, okay, spend four hours. It takes me two, four hours to work on a graphic. You know what I mean? 
So it took actually like a lot more now that I do it for my brand, but it's going to take me this whole time. I could get my, my 500, my band, you feel me like, yeah, but maybe some shit. But if I spend four or six hours on my shit, I can make 60 bands. I can make 70, you know what I mean? So it, it's more, um, grow the company, but it took me years. It took it, it. It's a very fucking hard state of mind to get out of that, bro. I went from 2016 when I first started like charging people online to like, what was what that like 2020 where i was just like four years just doing like graphics awesome. seeing people make money but like i don't under, i'm so stuck in my world it, it's a it's the hardest cycle of graphic designer i think that there's layers of like of like difficulty to escape from like the first one is like the twitter cover art i'm gonna do fucking drake's cover art what i think it should be guy and then from there it's this the the fucking you know the graphic designer for for clothing brands they get paid five times more so cover art you, that's going on Spotify. You ain't finna sell that shit. I'll give you eighty bucks, yeah. hundred. Yeah. For t-shirts, all right. I'll give you three, five hundred. And then if you drop your own shit, like man, you it, it, it's X. You know what I mean? It's whatever you want it to be. So, um, but it takes you fucking years to break that mindset. Years. It took me years, years, years. Especially if you don't have that like hustler background. Like my dad was too busy. My mom was too busy, and they were already working two jobs. They didn't have it all figured out. You know what I mean? So. It, it, it's difficult to break that uh that mindset have Very. you had any hollywood agents reach out to you to represent you mm -hmm. I, I, I that's all i can think of because the first thing i would be played off is like i have people i want you to develop products for yeah oh yeah no i have for sure the biggest right, you yeah. know but um they it, it won't make sense for them to pay what what i'm asking you know what i mean because they're used to paying you know um rightfully so it's a business they gotta run it you know but i know that like they they want my they want my 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 concepts they want me to bring it to them they also want production help and i could provide all that but it's like if i'm thinking of shit for you i could just drop this shit on my own and make way more money you, made you know what i mean now. it's been a couple of times where i made a graphic for somebody in like recent memory and uh i've been like you know what we're just gonna drop this on my brand Damn. i'm gonna get you some more money Damn. but also i need to get also i need to get paid for this, this is too hard. hard this is too hard i yeah. get paid for this too bro i'll promote it this is a 10, Damn. bro. This is a yeah. 10. Yeah. I just want to say a fun little story. When I used to do a, a thumbing through like the commissions all day, especially with the weed guys, if they're, ever, if this, this is for my grad designers, you're out there and you're with a client, whatever, whatever service job you do and they're stuck, they're just quiet. Be like, hey man, if you don't drop it, should I'll drop it. <laughs> oh, like, yo. Damn. You got to get us all <laughs> fucked up out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My next question. <laughs> uh, if, you, if, if you're trying to, like, this guy's been talking about it forever. Want to start with graphic design. Mm -hmm. What's your advice on that? Photoshop, just watch YouTube. It sounds hard. It sounds like oh, so for what? Like, how long? Like, you know, probably like six I months mean, to a year. I've been doing Photoshop. Well, the thing is, like I said, I tried doing music my whole life. Like, I was doing flyers in like high school, like uh, at the school computer, like Photoshop there. And uh, I, I learned the basics like in high school, I guess, say just like how to make a circle purple and how to make a text like that. You knock that out, like the fundamentals in like a couple of years. My guys knocked it out in like what feels like weeks, months, you know, with I mean? you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's the thing is that what get Photoshop, get on YouTube, get the basics down mm -hmm. and then try to get around someone established. A mentor. <laughs> right. Am I right? Though, Probably. Or? Who knows that, that, that that's the trick, huh? <laughs> I've had because we we run into these things where I'll have these ideas and then I I can't get someone to execute it properly. Yeah. Or I'm like, it's in your head. It's in my head. That's and, the big hold. And, and I'm literally like, uh, you feel like a monkey in front of a like a computer, like yeah. a Zoolander, where you're like banging on the computer and all you gotta do is type. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, it's it's so it's important. Made, well, now like I would say like you know a lot of the 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 products we're making that's that's mainly me you know what i'm saying but like most of the graphics i'm dishing that out to my designers at this point and um i'm thankful that i was able to spend so many years doing the designs myself by the hundreds um that i could have like perspective and be like oh you know you need to chill on the drop shadow right here and you actually gotta tilt that and hey make that text right here you should make that purple because this is purple i actually have perspective on it you know what i mean I, I have a like yep. a background for it so I'm not just like some jackass trying to tell someone what to do or anything like that. So I, I've, I've learned it, you know, just by doing designs myself, but to answer your question, how to get into it, it's like, it's important just to look at your closet, look at the stuff that you like. And just to start off, just to get those gears going, literally copy it. 
make make the fucking you know m do some flip flips are fun they're easy and you actually could get paid for them you know what i mean i i do flips for my brand all the time if it's good if it hits it hits you know what i mean that's always going to be the case for any industry especially with the weed industry people just love flips so that's a that's a fun way of just getting your feet wet and learning how to like turn things a different color how to make the text the same as snickers or whatever whatever you're doing chrome hearts that was yeah, a big one you see exactly everybody yeah, so had to take flips is basically just like like flipping a logo like if i yeah. want to do a, a like like for this one this one's like fucking i don't know some fucking windmill mcmillan or something yeah. right or, yeah yeah, yeah. it Nick looks Millen familiar though that. my grandfather's office oh yeah windmill stacks. yeah that's all we did was just we just flipped the aesthetic you know what yeah. i mean but people yeah. like they get it you know what i mean just because that uh, cues um, their brain that association like virgil was really good at that with off white yeah like with the, the the horizontal it's literally road signs you see everywhere yeah and that cue should be like it's oh he's the, thing. he's the master communicator yeah. what he's like go. crazy um but yeah do that with graphic design bro it's just like just focus so on like flips start with flips and then get a little introspective start looking at your closet and being like what what's my favorite shirt and why i'd ask myself that every fucking day and why yeah that's the key yeah not just oh that's my fit why why is that one your favorite yeah and Man, then break it great. down is it because of the fade is it because of the shoulders is it really because of the graphic is it because of the brand you know what i mean ask yourself that uh, that question and then like just just start gravitating towards those assets and uh applying it onto photoshop and that probably goes to any art form that's what i tell my guys you know what i mean and also what's important once you get into like the real deeper like photoshop like now you're fucking with like full cutouts there's inner shadow drop shadows there's wind and shit like um tell a story you know what i mean treat that shit like a painting you feel me that's what i do with my yeah. projects you know what i mean like with the say no to fendo i made that you know some of those assets were actually from a gucci main uh gz graphic i did for them uh when they did the versus battle i did that t-shirt by the way yeah that's a gang of products motherfuckers lacoste gang of shit that i've never really even like batman converse uber eats just outside the streetwear shit um nike we're gonna Ooh, be expecting bro. that master class here soon big dog Holy yeah you know i thought to, about how it to, how to make a you know how to make a product i know i could do it and i have no problem sharing this game just because it's like at the end of the day what makes me is me and that's impossible to reproduce but like all the other shit i'm sharing is stuff you could research so you could just look in yourself i'm kind of just helping people but like i truthfully like shit maybe one day maybe one these will be my famous last words but like i truthfully like put me on lie detector like i want this to be like a big ecosystem where everybody's making something everyone's feeding off of one another is there one or two collabs out there that you're like this would be top of the mountain for me like to collab with this other brand um or take them as a client not in well as a client yeah i think uh, i think if we did travis scott stuff we fucking kill it what i think like his audience would it just takes exposure for something like that you know like i know some people in his creative team and shit like that but those fools got jobs I ain't trying to give nobody a job <laughs> <laughs> you know that that's something that like you know because we all know a creative yeah. of like oh he knows drake or something like yeah. that but he, he ain't for introduce you know what i mean but uh you know for s situations like that you really just gotta uh you really gotta uh um you get you can't walk up on travis scott you can't walk up on drake kanye they get walked up by their uber drivers by the their waiter everybody they're bombarded those individuals like once you get to like that client list like they just gotta they gotta have their homework about you they gotta know who you are to be excited you know to have a meeting and like really hear you out because if it's playboy cardi if i try to talk to playboy cardi i mean he got some of my shit for the record but like he don't know me the fuck he don't yeah. know me in files in 7-eleven like yeah he uh um if i tried talking to him he wouldn't give a fuck you know what i mean and rightfully so he got so much shit going on like nothing personal it's his shit you know but like if he knew all about me if he knew what i could do then like i think we could make some real money you know but i think travis scott's one of those people that like when the opportunity happens if it does oh what i'll make it the best shit you ever draw i swear to god what I, come on i want to um reach out to the home and caleb count he's yeah. the owner of connected and they did his weed line for him and maybe you could make some synergy there if, if it works they, it they works product yeah he did the like, official travis scott weed drop yeah he talks to i remember that yeah. Sure. yeah yeah so yeah. maybe you could do something for his weed line and then it goes from there i'll definitely do that three i'm with that sure. hell yeah yeah bro, looking all day, man. I, I would love to see it because then i'm gonna i'm gonna want to rock the shit and fucking it's just dope man it's you're you're taking your approach and then now meeting you and hearing it come from you and i see your why and i see 
all these things and how it's played it like your journey's played a part in through all your products and it's all happened organically it's just inspiring as fuck even in graphic designers right now i'm sure they're watching or will be watching this and uh if you don't leave inspired from this one i don't know you know i don't know if you have any creative <laughs> yeah i agree uh, ability in your body yeah if you're any at any level some sort of a creative this is the episode well, bro even on top of that i want to make it even more vast and even make it more uh more more general for the viewers it's like i truthfully believe that like creativity is like uh muscles i think that like it just takes going to the gym it takes really like hustling and like really like that perseverance to get you where you want to be i think creativity is just a muscle in your brain that like like i like how i'm just spinning it bro i'm just very articulate i'm very I'm fucking borderline autistic you know what i'm saying like i'm very like uh like i love math i love science so i'm always trying to learn about myself and learn about creativity and like i truthfully believe that it's something that could be taught you know what i mean i've taught motherfuckers to make to go on to make graphics for the greats you know what i mean for the biggest brands within a year you know what i'm saying so like i i truthfully like i've seen it happen firsthand i i know creativity can be taught you know and it's just it just takes a, a closer look at yourself and just asking yourself what like what do you like about creative motherfuckers all oh, this and that the fact they can make some something dope okay i know it sounds a little overwhelming and it's easier said than done especially from this side of the table but you know i was i was lost as well Shit, i wasn't doing really anything with my life till i was like 23 24 you know i didn't have no thousands of followers on instagram you know i was working shitty jobs my whole life i didn't have no opportunities i have no cool cousins no cool homies like that you know um this shit just takes a long time to learn i don't think i was that creative growing up but what i just started doing was figuring out what makes me creative and smacking that you know but uh yeah and shit inspirational bro this one's been i'm gonna have to rewatch this one this is for sure my favorite interview notes. yeah thank Damn, you bro, bro. thank yeah. you thank you i was Appreciate just saying that, about that man. right now like as we we're talking i'm like you know what and this is i brought up a lot of uh topics i've never been able to like you know because at least for me i've done maybe like four or five interviews every time i leave one it's like oh, i should have said that oh i should have found a way to like pivot the conversation to this but like no i feel like we touched on everything and um you know uh, i'm very thankful to uh be able to be here bro it's dope you feel appreciate me? you man it's a dope coming. ass uh spot you guys got man what thank Inspire. you appreciate you man just dropping all this game and, yeah. and having a heart to help people hell yeah you're hell an open yeah. book and that's that's dope as fuck yeah i mean because th there ain't nobody's gonna do that shit you know what i mean so it's like i'd rather make friends with y'all than enemies i'm not gonna be like fuck y'all this is my shit you guys ain't gonna <laughs> learn from me you know what i mean like nah i want to teach y'all because when y'all get interviews i want y'all to say fucking shout out to blasi motherfucker yeah for real two takeaways bet on yourself invest in your passion like hey, quit bullshitting and learn graphic design yeah that's for sure, that's for sure. Fuck, <laughs> man Fuck. you just Try want me to do out. some pack gods designs yeah we're gonna need more dude out of you, man. Blaz, was that your first smoke of the day yes hey well, as a matter of fact it was yeah I, bro yeah i had a uh i had a two hour fucking meeting this morning bro Jeez, i hate shit like that but I had to be there the whole two hours and um that was the first thing i did i got ready and then came over here i didn't really get a chance to uh, smoke so hell yeah hell shit yeah. man we appreciate you yeah. for real um it's blasi in this motherfucker and it's nothing hell personal. yeah nothing appreciate personal all at all you man know, you know Let's what it go. is first we're gonna have all blasi's info at the bottom click on it find him reach out yeah for real get Make that shit happen and if you do taxes get it my man help him out on that <laughs> yeah, yeah, appreciate sir. it much love to blasi uh -huh. shout out to la and it's nothing personal time first first smoke of the day at Let's all go. Peace. peace hey stop before you leave roll up another one we got more episodes just like this click right here